Happy Monday evening to y'all. My name is Michael Holmes, and welcome to Saving Throw's presentation of Mutants and Masterminds, Shadows of the Mirror Men. Um, if you're just joining us, this is episode two. So what we're going to do is uh, go around the table, introduce the players, we'll do a little housekeeping, do some recap, and then we'll jump into the story. So without further ado, to my extreme left... Hi, my name is Stephen Pope. And I'm playing King Z, which is basically what happens if you take a certain giant radioactive lizard that's been around since the 50s and shove him into a person who doesn't like it very much. Is it Gorgo? That's like the British Godzilla. I mean, anyway. Eh, copyright infringement. I don't care. Giant mm. lizard. Giant lizard. Thing. Yes, non-specific kaiju. And to my not as extreme left. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jen Kretschmer, uh, Dream Wisp on all the things, oh. uh, except for the things where I'm Dream Wisp Jen. Um, and I am playing Nicola Nick Minos, also known as Blitz. She likes making extra time for herself. Mm -hmm. And hopefully we'll uh, explore a little bit why she is called Blitz, mm -hmm. perhaps. Mm. Self-care is really in right now. It's really in. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Make it's uh, it's onomatopoeic, I would call it. <laughs> <laughs> to my right, we have... Hi, I'm Jody Hauser. I'm playing Skylar Smith, who is a, you know, she's an influencer and a brand spokesperson, and she can move stuff with her mind a little bit. Fantastic. And last but certainly not least... Hi, I'm Eric, and I'm playing uh, Chuck. And Chuck is like, uh, I think we, we said after the show, it's like you took all the powers of Colossus and you put it into Charles Boyle from Brooklyn Nine-Nine. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think I was around for that, but that's very apt. It's, so, it's yes. 100%. Ten points to Gryffindor. Um, also, thanks, Aleph Sharp and BSB Care. We're very glad to have you here tonight. Um, and let's see, uh, Aleph Sharp has given a re-roll to Jody Hauser. Yay, thank you. Uh, and speaking of things that make the game potentially easier for you, um, everybody starts the game with one hero point, and hero points allow you to do extra stuff. Uh, at the cost of a hero point, you can edit a scene in your favor, you can do a very heroic feat, you can improve a roll, yada, yada, yada. If you think that there's something that requires little um, oomph, you could probably use a hero point for it. So you had one. Steven, do you already have yours? I I spent mine last session. All right. But I got a new one because of yes, new session. Yes, please do. Right. Um, you do not have one, but you deserve one. And so this is from last session, and then we get one more from the No, session. you only get one per session. Oh, okay. okay. So, so yeah, I didn't from last session. Are we the re-rolls are different separate? because somebody, are, somebody paid cash money for that re-roll. So cash you hang on to that money. until you're ready to use it. Okay, I still had two re-rolls. Uh, please take them. Last. All right. That's what And that hopefully. And by hopefully, I mean definitely, you will get a chance to use those tonight. Um, what was I gonna say? Uh, okay, so if you're new to the Mutants Masterminds, it's a basic D20 system. The mechanic is D20 plus uh, modifier versus difficulty equals fun. Um, we'll get into the mechanics of specific powers and effects as the game goes along, but that's really all you need to know. Um, so let's see what happened last session everything. Um, so there was a book signing in downtown Los Angeles by Dr. Ulysses Armstrong, who was once known as the superhero, superheroic adventurer Patient Zero. So this was his memoir that he finally published at uh, 88 years of age. So there was a huge crowd. All of our heroes were gathered there. Um, Skylar is a social media darling. Um, Blitz is a scientific social media whiz. How would you... Pause on that. We're, we're going to get to you in specificity in a second here. Um, King Z was there with his teenage son who loves being a human teenager in Los Angeles. And why wouldn't you, really? And okay. Chuck was also there. Uh, I'm an accountant, and I crushed his hand. Um, you also <laughs> crushed part of the last bookstore yes. downtown. And Just like a couple of bricks. You know, it's an old building. I'm sure they're going to tear it down one of these days. No, anyway. Don't say that. Don't ever no, say that. No, they're just going to turn it into a condominium. I will spend my hero point to keep that from <laughs> All right, Don't so. say that loud. Oh. Uh, and I'm what I neglected to mention is there's a, a shop called Weird Beers just down the street, that. which Touché. lives up to their name. Um, our heroes were invited back to the Wilshire Grand Plaza, which is a real building. I encourage you to Google it. Um, Dr. Armstrong has his living quarters and his lab on the very top floors of this building. Um, you were all cajoled by your boyfriend, Kinsey Beck, science boy, 
to go into the Doom Room, which is a straight out of Chris Claremont danger room kind of scenario. And you all survived because apparently the room was malfunctioning that day. Um, <laughs> you or also, were awesome, either way. You also met a couple of notable NPCs, such as uh, Rex Strongman, uh, who taught you to be gentle with the phone. Imagine it's a baby. You don't want to crush the baby. Um, you both, you all met, uh, or you, no, you, sorry, met Dr. Payaso and Sad Girl. Um, you saw that mysterious figure flitting around in the shadows who made eye contact with you at some point and then flitted away. And then you were called down to the street because there was a disturbance at the 7th Street Metro Station. When you descended the steps, you saw that the trains were off the tracks, there were screams of people in danger. It's my uh, best friend Scam Likely calling. Um, and you did what superheroes do. You protected the innocent, and you also came across some very strange feature, uh, creatures that seemed to be made out of broken shadows and fragments of reality. One of them told you that all they wanted to do was get out. What that means remains to be seen. Um, you were able. We love the Jordan Peele movie. That's right. Yes, one. exactly. Yeah. And then the next guy said us, yeah. which looks great. Uh, <laughs> um, then you went back to Doctor Armstrong's lab. You were able to retrieve one of these weird shadow creatures, which had solidified into kind of a humanoid mirror creature that was continually shifting, even though it was unconscious. Um, and after doing some research, you discovered a Los Angeles Times article from the 1940s about ghosts in the subway, because there did used to be a subway in Los Angeles way back in the day. And based on that, you did a little more research on the author, uh, Stan Winslow, and you came to find out that he is in a retirement community in Riverside, California. Um, at the end of our session, you had adjourned to Icarus headquarters on Mid Wilshire, near the ambassador, or the former site of the Ambassador Hotel. It's a high school now. And you were, in the words of Alex from Clockwork Orange, making up your Razdocs what to do with the evening. So, it is late in the day. Traffic going to the Inland Empire would be impossible. So after some discussion about how best to approach Mr. Winslow to see what he knows, you all decide to go back to your places of dwelling for the evening. Let's start with you. Nico, tell me about Icarus. So Icarus has been around for about five years. It's long enough to catch on and be popular, but not so long that it's old tech yet. Um, and it's been, it, it caught on fairly quickly, you know, as, as the various uh, superhero communities found out about it, it, it spread because Excuse me, it was a nice way for people to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Excuse me. No worries. And communicate with other like-minded folks. Now, you shared a detail with me before we started about the true nature of Icarus. So it's a biometric social network, basically. Yeah. But... But it's also, uh, we're, we're keeping tabs on where, what people are up to and, and what different powers have evolved and mutated. Um, well, well, so we aren't sure what we are going to do yet with that data, but I, I am a scientist and I'm very curious about what's happening evolutionarily and uh, with with our species. Knowledge is power, Knowledge right? is power, I've, um, and power can be used for good or evil, and I haven't quite decided which I am yet. With great power, something, something, something. something. Uh, <laughs> a lot of red flags, I'm just, I'm just saying. Exactly. Um, it's not, that's not public knowledge, but... I'm not saying... No, okay. Um, have I'm you gone public yet? Evil Facebook, but I mean, Facebook. Uh, your company, company hasn't gone public um, yet. I'm not sure. Okay. I think that's something that might be fun to build together. Okay, so, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, so what are you doing with your evening? Uh, I think I'm going to... I, I'm going to try and start digging into the, that 40s era ghost story. Okay. I love urban folklore, so that's something Nick will go digging into. You know, cult horror is her, her jam. Cool. It's what she's got the posters of on the wall, so what? she's going to go try and scratch the surface. You know, horror always is an ex exemplifying social fears. Let's find out what was what was going on in the 40s. Okay. We'll come back to that in a second. Um, I'm going to ask you to roll some dice when okay. we come back to you. King Z, what are you up to? 
Well, you drove back to the west side somehow. at like 5 p.m. How did you do? Why did you do that? I don't know. You just took, we have the you took Uber. Santa Monica Boulevard and just said, I'm just going to stay here. <laughs> <laughs> well, we took the Uber and we got back to the apartment, you know, on the beach, of course. And, you know, I just immediately ocean in. Very cool. Watch yeah. the sunset. Hell no. No, okay. screw that. I'm, I'm I'm in the ocean. Right, 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 I, right. The water is kind of gently sizzling around you. Well, yeah, probably. Mm. I, I'm probably walking along the ocean floor a little bit. I have the uh, I have the immunity superpower. I can breathe underwater. Nice. So I'm just kind of enjoying the quiet, enjoying the lack of cars, enjoying the fact I didn't have to fly to Riverside because flight is inhuman and unnatural and I'm not a fan. We're gonna explore that. Thank you for telling me that. Well, um, we that last are you uh, are you immune to anything else, King Z? Well, I ha- I'm immune to cold, pressure, suffocation, and drowning. So basically, uh, the vacuum of space and a lot of other things. Yes. Good to know. Um, Prince, uh, sorry, Eric Prince, right? That's your son's name? He goes by that. Yeah. I don't understand it. Prince Z. Um, he, is he also re- bought a cell phone. I don't understand that either. He is really, really pushing for pizza tonight. So much that he is blowing your phone up, even underwater, because you do have a waterproof phone. Yeah, of course. And it is 2019 Los Angeles. If you don't have a cell phone, you're pretty much dead. Oh, yeah. 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 Um, I got it against my will, but I got one. Yeah. We can have the pizza. It is fine. Have you done your homework? Dot, 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 dot. I do not understand the dots. Have you done your homework? Well, no, not? it's the, the typing dots. Uh, <laughs> geeky, geeky freaky site. I know who you are. Thank you for being well, here. Um, that is currently my friend who is trouncing me in words for friends. Uh, <laughs> um, no, he's typing, he's typing, and you can see that he's starting and stopping a few times, and he says no. <laughs> Sad face emoji. Puking emoji. Poo. <laughs> do not send me poo. Uh... <laughs> More to the point, and by the way, he's totally doing that thing where he just has his phone on, you know, microphone mode, and it's recording him. <laughs> Underwater. Underwater, uh-huh. so every third word is probably getting across. We have agreed. You do your homework, then we can have the sustenance of these people. I do not understand why you like it. It is greasy and hot and doesn't squirm. Okay, bye! <laughs> Hang up. Um, a couple of people in wetsuits gently swim by you, take pictures, wave. Do you glow or anything? Um, I think a little bit. Okay. Sorry, I shouldn't, I'm not trying to railroad you. Oh, no, you, no. You I, be the I kaiju do, you want to I do also be. have the Z-Force going on. Okay, and what is the Z-Force? It, it's just kind of weird bullshit radio a- radioactive stuff like you have in comic books, you know, where radioactivity is just magic. So it offers me protection, uh, impervious. I've got an idea for a superhero, all right? He's a lizard, powered by radiation. There you go! Okay. Uh, So you have pizza, and it's lovely, and you bond with your son for a moment before you collapse from having to people all day. Because it's hard for you. People. Chuck, what does an evening with you look like now that you've got superhuman strength? Uh, honestly, very... Very much the same as most evenings, just a lot more <laughs> careful. He goes to his uh, his his one bedroom house uh, apartment with his his two cats uh, and feeds them and watches television. Only he breaks a lot more things now. Uh, not the cats. Not the cats. Not, the, cat, not yeah. the cats. He's been he he's, he's honestly he's stayed away from them quite a bit, but he's he's now thinking about like. Uh, about uh, Rex Strongman's advice, so he's able to begin gentle with me. gentle. Don't want to crush the baby. So he's able to to finally uh, be like as intimate with his cats as he wishes to be. SF Gen S forty nine er. Thank you. Welcome, Thank welcome. You so much. And I would say uh, on this evening in particular, uh, he is going to probably uh, like watch TV for a little bit, but then start thinking about the events that happened and the. The, the rail line and the the, uh, the the subway stuff and 
go into accounting mode and start looking into things like um, like who who owns the places like that that place that we went is that a city you know who used to own that who owns the place above and get into like that kind of stuff okay. like he's gonna just follow that train of logic so are you more like getting actuarial to try to assess the damage or are you just no. kind of trying to research. find the connective yeah, tissue yeah researching like the following the money of the location they were at and seeing like who owns it you know who, who has interest in it like and all that stuff I love it uh, two questions what part of town do you live in and what are your cat's names uh, let's see Chuck lives in oh, I was gonna say is the cat's name Chuck no no Chuck's cat named Chuck I would say Chuck lives in uh, I'm gonna say he lives in Valley Village okay <laughs> yeah you know because I mean he could afford to live somewhere nicer but he you know he's, that's a, that's he's a bad commute though yeah to, to I'm, but it saves or... money he's yeah. not uh, and uh, his cats are uh, Simba and Nala. Aww. He got them together. Mm -hmm. I love it. And Valley Village is adjacent to the Disney Studios, so you know that's that's on brand. Mm -hmm. Well done, sir. Well done. Um, Skylar, you and your boyfriend uh, Kinsey are just wrapping up dinner at Fred 62. Um, yeah. He had the uh, Fred McMurray, which is the breakfast sandwich with the sausage patty on it. And for an hour, he's been talking at you nonstop about getting to talk and hang out with Dr. Armstrong for the rest of the day. And I'm like, his lab, Skylar, his lab, it's amazing. It's like 10,000, like, Science places. I'm sorry. I'm very, very enthusiastic and confused right now. But, but no. We we were talking about you. I, I mean, Me? not not in a bad way. But Dr. Armstrong wants to research you. I, I. In a not in a bad way, right? No. It's just I I, I told him about your powers and how you're still kind of learning to do what you do. And I mean, he helps people. He could help you. I mean, if this is what you're like with your powers now, just imagine what you could be if you were like 15 Skylers. Uh, I, I, mean, I mean, like hypothetically, you know, not literally 15 Skylers. I don't think he can do that. Yeah, well, keep, you know, like, we'll talk about that. You know, keep your fantasies to yourself when we're in public. Uh, but no. Um, oh. <laughs> um, I mean, maybe, what do you, you you're the fan of him. What do you think? I mean,. I mean, he's a legend, not, not just in the science community for what he did for disease and, you know, people in impoverished countries, but he, he punched a bad guy into the sun once. I mean, not literally into the sun, but, you know, he managed to punch him at least past the horizon line. It's a metaphor. You know what I mean? No, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. I feel like that could be good to be better at this stuff like I you know you saw what I was like in the doom room I didn't know what I was doing it, like it was kind of embarrassing really but I mean I think you're the greatest and I just want to make you better thank you and we start on Monday so <laughs> surprise oh uh well maybe we Dump him. wrap up this other stuff first with like the weird like mirror guy I'm such an asshole I, are you okay? I didn't, I didn't really ask about that. I mean, I think I'm okay. I didn't get like, I mean, nothing happened. The worst stuff was really in the doom room, actually, like the gas and everything. But, um, I mean, yeah, I think so. It's just weird. And it's like, now we're kind of all invested and it's like a mystery and, you know, we kind of have to see it through, right? You know, it's weird. I mean drops that energy that he had and he gets this really analytical thousand yard kind of stare and he's like we were studying that creature that you brought back from the subway and it solidified for a moment and it was almost it was a face that I almost recognized it was like my own but aspects of myself that I didn't want to acknowledge it's hard to explain and then it just kind of went back to that dormant state I show him the selfie that I took with the, like that. That's it. That's it. Yeah, it's weird, right? I mean, we still don't know what it is. Dr. Armstrong said he was going to investigate it and politely got me out the door. I think, you know, my enthusiasm gets the better of me sometimes. But uh, um, 
what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to say, Skylar, is I'm glad you're okay. And I'm sorry I didn't ask about you sooner. It's okay. I mean, I think we're both still kind of new to this stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah, so we'll figure it out together. Okay. <laughs> um, and you live in Los Feliz, which yeah. we'd established. Um, Los yeah. Feliz, California, which is the home of the Dresden, which was featured in the hit Hollywood film Swingers. Marty and Elaine. Yes. Um, and your place is still full of boxes. You're able to afford yeah, we, a two-bedroom in Los Feliz, so good for you, but you don't have parking, so meh, yeah. it's a trade-off. No, we, like, I I actually don't even have a car. I'm, I take lifts. Oh, sure, places. lifts, Ubers, That's you know. That's sweet, sweet ad revenue. Yeah. Exactly. And, you know, there's a, a metro station just down the block right there on... Uh, yeah, I'm like a little, I feel like taking the metro for a while, you know, <laughs> it's just a little... Uh, it might not exist for a hot second, too. So. Yeah, and as, yeah. as you look further down Vermont near the Children's Hospital, where the metro station is, you can see the uh, the telltale sign of police car lights and yeah, a lot is... more people on foot than, than there might that's be. Cool. For... Also, also, I'm kind of getting better at this flying thing, so, you know, that, that works, too, sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so your place is just a mess of boxes because you were in the process of moving in. Um, you're still trying to figure out whose books go on which shelf. Um, you've got the TV and the games set up, though, so, you know, that's all good. Yeah. Um, and then everybody enjoys the rest of their evening and drifts off to sleep. Um, roll me some dice. Um, you've got... Science, I know, but do you have an investigation or anything? I mean, I've got your character sheet right here. I, I got to be I would have dumped his ass if he signed me up for a scientific project um, without asking first. I have it's probably not the first time he's done that, let's oh. be honest. That's a, like, one-time mm. fuck up in my book. Why don't you... How, how deep do you want to go with your research? Um, I mean, if I start to find something, I'll, I'll dig deep. Okay. Tell you what, I want you to roll me an investigation roll. So you just get a... Just a flat? Yeah. You get a three modifier to that because you don't have any ranks in it. Oof, seven. Okay, so your initial um, searching doesn't bring up anything else besides Stan's article. Mm. But you're just looking on the surface internet yeah. at this point. Um, you being you, it's really easy to get to the dark web yeah. or whatever. So go ahead and give me uh, an expertise science roll. Okay. And I need you to get two degrees of success, which means you have to get the target number, which I know, plus 10. Okay. That would be 23. Okay, so you got one degree of success. Um, so you are able to crack into a couple other databases. Um, you see that the story was carried by a couple of other regional newspapers in California because it's Los Angeles news, so it's exciting, but it's not displayed prominently. Um, there's a lot of reports of, of crops being uh, impacted in like the Indio Valley right around that time. Um, but that's kind of where it ends, although you do see an apocryphal kind of link um, on a Reddit page that discusses something similar that happened at UCLA in the 1970s. Um, and that's as much as you can get for the role that you have. You can certainly roll again if you want. Um, it's entirely up to you. Uh, yeah, I'll start digging into the UCLA stuff. Okay. So and that was in the 70s, right? That yeah, was in the 70s, yeah. 1971. So we're looking at like 31 years. Uh, so that's 24. Okay, so you get another degree of success. Um, so through that rabbit hole, you were able to find a couple more articles. Um, one from the campus newspaper about a, an art installation that kind of went awry and um, it, there was a small disturbance that erupted around that and a bunch of students were arrested and it was shut down pretty quickly. Um, but there are some medical records that you find um, in your research about those students um, when they were admitted to the hospital there. Um, about them raving and, and acting very irrational, um, eyes not able to focus, um, and you actually are able to uncover a description of the art installation, which um, 
The artist called it the echo chamber. And basically what it was is he'd converted this disused lab space into an auditorium of sorts um, that had uh, very early video projections that caused kind of a weird feedback loop and dissonant sounds. Uh, and it was meant to symbolize madness. Um, however, it's very difficult to track down the name of the artist because it appears that somehow it's been lost to time. And that's as far as you get before fatigue kind of takes you over. Mm -hmm. um, so as evening turns into night, night turns into the wee hours, you all are visited by these, these terrifying visions in your dreams. You can't breathe. You've read about uh, shadow people before, but this is like an entire world populated by beings that have no substance but want to capture yours. Um, you try to scream. You can't. Typical nightmare kind of stuff. But there is a large figure looming in the background. And as this kind of underlying rhythm of anxiety and fear and these creatures getting closer and closer to you, um, it moves one mighty hand and brushes them aside as if they are smoke. And this ponderously huge face with one giant glowing orb in the center kneels down in front of you. It, it is larger than anything you can possibly imagine. And it whispers your name. And that wakes you up like that. And now it's morning in Los Angeles. <clears throat> Hold that thought for a second. <laughs> so, I believe we left it with you guys deciding to take um, an Icarus van to Riverside, although you petitioned for flying. Yeah, but no. like, the weird lizard guy, not into it. And I can get there super fast, but... It's a lot of energy to get there. You want to take your, your friends with you. Yeah. Um, do one of you want to drive? Do you want to have one of your people drive? I mean, I think we probably have the tech to pretty much auto it. Okay, cool. So you get a, a, a white panel van. I mean, yeah, someone should drive. sit in the seat and make it look like something. Right, like that, exactly. The last thing we want is trouble. a lawsuit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> self driving vehicles and whatnot. Yeah. Cool. Um, so you hop on the 10 freeway, and uh, you're caught in mid-morning traffic. Um, but fortunately, you're going east, so it's not as bad as if you were coming into Los Angeles. And you go through, oh god, and Alhambra, and Pomona, and just tons of kind of nowhere places with outback steakhouses as far as the eye can see. Um, Is it just the four of us, though? Mm -hmm. It's for days. I... Well, Kinsey definitely didn't come with you, right. um, because he, he still felt kind of bad that he didn't ask you, and he was very quiet and sullen when, when you left in the morning, and you know that when Kinsey's in that kind of mood, it's probably better to just leave him be. Um, I don't know, do you want to bring anybody from Icarus with you, or...? Um, I don't know that we need anybody from Icarus, but do we want to reach out to Sad Girl? Mm. Since she was really helpful with the other. Yeah, that would make sense. Okay. So, um, her name is Irma Navarro. That's her given name. Her Chris it's an Echo Park, right? Yes. So. Her, her Christian name, if you will. Um, did you want to just stop by and say hello? Do you want to call her? I'll ping her a message. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, you've, you've got her number. You, you have tons of O contacts. So do you. It's one of your advantages, as a matter of fact. Um, and there's a brief moment of hesitation on her end. She's like, I'm sorry, who is this? Uh, it's coming, obviously, from mm -hmm. Admin. We met the other night. Ah, right, right. You're the, um... Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's, uh, it's nice to talk to you again. What can I do for you? Uh, we're looking into what was going on. We thought you were, uh, you were helpful. <laughs> well, I do try my best to be helpful. Uh, can you be a little more specific? I'm a very busy woman. So, we found out that there's a... Well, we have a lead on possibly what those things, or someone who might have information about what those things could be 
B and we're gonna go. And you want me dig. because Well, you were there. I thought you might be interested. If you're not interested, that's fine. Well, I'm not interested in digging around in another subway tunnel with my afternoon if that's what you're insinuating. No, we're talking to a person this time. Alright. And who is this person? Uh his name is uh Stan Winslow. He was a a reporter, a crime and court reporter for the LA Times uh, back in the 40s. I see. And where does Mr. Winslow live now? Dot, dot, dot. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Riverside. Since it's text, you don't get this, but she turns her shoulder over her shoulder and speaks to somebody in the room in Spanglish and then says Riverside kind of dismissively. Um, <clears throat> do I drive there? No, you can. We can pick you up, or you know, you know, uh, we got someone who's not too far from you. All right, sounds good. Okay. She gives you her address. It's right across from Echo Park Lake, um, kind of up on one of the hills. Uh, it's a very nice old Spanish-style mansion. It's two stories. It's lovely. Um, so, yeah. And so I'll text Skylar and say, hey, I need you to pick her up. Oh, I thought we were already all in there. Oh. I mean, we can retcon that. That's very easy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah if I'll you, pick her up. I mean, I guess that makes sense. If you're at Icarus headquarters, then you can kind of... Yeah, and if you're in Echo Park. Although you have to take an Uber back Alaska, to, to, yeah, to Mid-City. Yep. Because you're not going to ask her to drive all the way out to the beach just to pick you up. Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Um, so, yeah. You uh, you go to meet Sad Girl. Yeah, um, just, we share a one over, I guess. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Um, and you get to talking, and, you know, she's a little chilly at first. And it's not a very long ride, but... Um, you know, she starts asking about you and what makes you special. This is a town of very special people. You keep some pretty esteemed company. You impressed my father. Well, you know, it was just, um, I've always sort of, since I was a kid, I was able to, you know, move stuff, but it's gotten stronger <sighs> as I've gotten older, and I guess, like, now it's strong enough to be useful. Uh, my 13th birthday. Um, Same. they were singing me happy birthday and I started to sing along and I broke the windows. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, my father joked that, um, all the singing lessons that he got from me were, were worthless at that point. <laughs> but, um, because of what he does and the people that he knows, uh, Dr. Dr. Armstrong, for example, um, they were able to show me how to harness my gifts. Maybe Dr. Armstrong could help you too. Yeah. Apparently my boyfriend already kind of signed me up to do that, so... Oh, is he the um, little skinny guy with the glasses? Yeah. Oh, he's cute. He's cute, yeah. How long have we been together? Uh, a little over a year. We just moved in together, actually, like a week ago, so... Oh, yeah. that's lovely. Um, and she starts to sing a little tune under her breath, and you feel very calm yeah. all of a sudden. Um, and then, yeah, the, you you get over there, and you're at Icarus headquarters. So, you want to tell the team what you found out? Uh, Yeah. So everyone was there for the emails about uh, the reporter, but it looks like there was uh, another event in the 40s that affected the crops. So something, I don't know if it's in the dirt, if it's in the water, something is affecting the ecosystem here. Mm. Um, but then another... 30-ish years later, in 71, there was another event at UCLA. Um, there was something called the Echo Chamber. Someone decided to get super arty and did something with projections and sound, and it put a bunch of people in the hospital. It was bad news all around. Um, I don't have the name of the artist. I couldn't find it. I kind of wiped out. It was a long day yesterday. But... Agreed. Yeah. Well, the, so. didn't that thing that we talked to, didn't it say, like, someone had called it? So maybe that art thing somehow called them? It's possible. I don't know how you call, like, weird non-corporeal shadow mirror people. Like, I don't know. Art seems as plausible as, like, anything, right? Yeah? No, I wouldn't call them. I mean, <laughs> A bunch of dreams about them last night. Huh? Really? Me too. Really? Yeah. 
That's weird. That's weird. It was like a big, big thing. With like an eye? Yes. With the glowing... Wait, it what? Didn't... Call your name. name. Yeah. Okay, that's weird. He knew my actual name. That was the scary part. And I have the fearless merit, so I usually don't care. Mm. No, I love it. I love that you refer to yourself with characteristics of a character sheet. <laughs> it's something Kingsy would do. Love it. <laughs> uh, that's yeah, weird. Hmm. It's like, yeah, that's like, like not the weirdest thing that's happened to me recently, but you know, it's getting up there. It's up there. Yeah. I think we should, uh... Hmm. I believe we should find it and kill it immediately. I'm not entirely sure that's a bad plan. Hmm. I mean, that thing was really big. Yes, well... I was like that once. Death is still possible. We simply have to find its vital organs and remove them from the body. I feel like that's the quote of the night. (laughs) Maybe the big glowy... Thing that I generally like large glowing are objects like... are good goals. Okay. Sad girl has been politely just sitting listening to you all. Well, I had a dream last night that we were in the armpit of California, Riverside, so why don't we go ahead and go? No offense to anybody that actually lives in Riverside. Chuck entirely in character. It's like, you know, it's funny, they were actually going to film Breaking Bad in Riverside, but uh, they got better tax deals for Phoenix. I don't care. Let's go. <laughs> what is Breaking Bad? Oh, you haven't watched it? No. You can, um, you can explain on the way. And Sad Girl is dressed a little bit rockabilly. She's got like a white t-shirt and Levi's 501s rolled up and she's got her hair in a bandana and she does have some really great ink work um, that you can tell has been added over, you know, 20 years or so. Um, she's in her mid-40s. Um, she's like, shotgun! So you all get in the van and you, you drive as quickly as you can to Riverside. It takes an hour and some change. So Walter White is a science teacher. Uh-huh. <laughs> I'm just See. on my phone. No the entire time. thing existed because we don't have socialized medicine. Let it go. <laughs> um, I love that the, that's the takeaway. That's, that's great. No, it's true. It's too, totally true. I mean, What's between up? that Not and weed, that, 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 that is would the be her takeaway from that whole yeah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, what year exactly did the article from the 40s happen? 1946. So we're looking at 46, 71, Mm -hmm. and 2019? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, that you know of. That we know of. Mm Mm-hmm. So eventually you get to Riverside. Um, You get off the freeway. There's a Carl's Jr. on one side. There's a Del Taco on the other. Um, You know, it's a nice residential part of town. And... uh, This place is depressing. (laughs) I, I love it. Um, And... Based on speaking to uh, Janie Smith, the current crime reporter for the LA Times, one of the only uh, staff reporters that is not in danger of being cut anytime soon, no matter how many times the organization changes management, topical, um, you know that you are going to the Gotterdammerung Home for Aging Metahumans. That is the Gotterdammerung Home for Aging Metahumans. Um, you've heard tell of it as a place that old supers go to be forgotten. Um, you've not been there, you know, it's not really a place people go to visit. But, as you follow ways and it takes you to the location, uh, provided, you see that it's actually a very nice, kind of sprawling campus. In the center, there's an old three-story brick building, um, like a lot of older hospitals and sanatoriums has kind of that um, trifold kind of design, it's hard to explain, but you know what I'm talking about. Um, and then surrounding it are, um, temporary buildings like barracks and, and newer construction and, uh, you know, ample parking. And you can see figures moving about, uh, hail boogie. (laughs) Hail boogie. Thanks boogie. Um, and yeah, you, you can see people being pushed around in wheelchairs, walking in a leisurely pace. You see kind of a, phosphorescent um, skeletal figure and in a nice older suit just kind of floating along um, as if he's forgotten where he's going. They, you don't know if it's a he or a she, um, but you know that the admin building is the oldest of them. 
So you park and you make your way to the front desk and there's a secretary there. She's on the phone. She looks very beleaguered and she kind of looks up at you. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, you have to pick them up today. I don't care if they're made of steel. He's going to start to stink. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm hanging up. I'm hanging up. Hanging. Bye. Hi, welcome to the Garden Dammerung home for aging medic humans. How can I help you? Hi, we were hoping to talk to Stan Winslow. Do you have an appointment? You need an appointment to visit people here? Well, it's polite to give the guests some notification that you're coming to visit them. A lot of them are infirm. And we have to make arrangements to get them out of certain holding facilities or... Uh, I'm sorry, who are you? Hi, I'm Skylar Smith. Skylar Smith? Why do I know that name? I do a lot of stuff. Did I see you on TMZ? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, I know who you are. Yeah. Okay, you're cool, but why Why? Do you, why are you here? Why do you want to see Stan Did Winslow? Did you actually hear about what happened in LA yesterday with the, the all the subway stuff? No. Uh, there was like some weird... I don't even know how to describe it, but he actually wrote about something that was kind of similar. So we're 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 all kind of being all like superhero-y and investigating. So we were hoping to talk to him about that. Uh huh. And and the rest of you are are along for the ride. I'm guessing. That's yeah. my boss. Wait, I feel like I know you too. Oh, I'm sorry. I see so many people, and I mean, I see lots of people. I I see in different dimensions, so it's a little. Discombobulating so cool. sometimes. I understand. Well, you say it's cool, but just try it for a day. <sighs> you through. don't ever see weird, like, shadowy people, do you? No? Okay. I'm not sure what the answer you're looking for there is. Well, like, if you see other dimensions, maybe you saw the dimension where they came from, or I don't know how it works. Not today. Okay. Uh, oh, Stan Winslow, why do I know that name? Hold on. And she starts flipping, she starts clicking on her computer, and you can tell she's... She knew he was going to make the arrangements for us, mm -hmm. right? Yes, she did say she was going to do that. Um, she is scrolling, she's looking through different tabs. Um, you can tell that she gets frustrated because she throws her mouse down, and then she opens a big, heavy drawer and takes out an older-style ledger. Flips to the back. Wins the... He's in the isolation wing, but he doesn't have any power. Why do you want to see this guy? I told you because he was a reporter and he wrote about this thing that's related yeah, wait, to this hold other on, thing. Hold on, there's a post-it note. I have to call the doctor because he wants to talk to you guys. So I'm going to call the doctor because he wants to talk to you guys. They have an isolation wing for the geriatrics. Uh huh. No, yeah. they're here about Winslow. No, I know. I know what she said. Look, they're here. Can you just come talk to him for a second? I thought I was in a facility like this, but it was much nicer. Thank you. Uh, for, for, like, normal when people. my species grows old, we tend to kill them and consume them. So yeah, the doctor's coming, and she just kind of lingers on you for a second. Um, Blank face. <laughs> um, so if you could just wait for a sec, there's some coffee there and the TV's on, so just don't mess anything up. Um, so that girl's like, fine, yes, I want nothing more than institutional coffee right now. And she sits down and she gets a cup of coffee and takes out her phone, starts scrolling. Um, five minutes turns into 10, 10 minutes turns into 20, um, and then you can hear the telltale uh, clop, clop, clop of hard-soled shoes coming down one of the older hallways, and the place smells like a combination of, of cafeteria food and, um, like, cleaning chemicals mm -hmm. and age, mm -hmm. um, both age of people and age of the building. Lovely and combination. Um, what was that? Lovely scent combination. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a hospital. Just spit on my phone, trying to ignore it exactly. as much as possible. Um, you are getting so many hits with that selfie. Although, wait, no. No, we didn't post. We, the, we didn't post the selfie, but um, I probably posted a selfie from our, uh, Armstrong's party. Though, yeah, yeah, so that's yeah. That's blowing up. Yeah. Um, I'm still bothering you about Breaking Bad. 
Yeah. No, I think what what you'd really enjoy is like his transformation. He's like a normal man, but then he realizes mm-hmm. he's, he's the bad guy. Yes. So his search for power drives him towards evil. Yeah. That like it. What started out as sort of relatable a, in an altruistic way really like leads just him like down a dark path just that a alienates him from his family. The one thing that he was trying to hold on to. Mm-hmm. Also, it was filmed in Albuquerque. Yeah, that's what I meant. Yeah, it's okay. It's my hometown. Um, so the in stuff... this universe, it's okay. No, that's good. That's canon now. <laughs> Breaking Bad in this particular iteration of the universe was filmed in Phoenix. The what, more what you is know... the significance of the pizza? Uh... So the clop clop of the footsteps comes to an abrupt halt, um, and you hear a voice behind you say, "Nicola." And you turn around. And there is a tallish man, um, olive skin, beautiful crystal blue eyes, um, receding hair, but cut stylishly. Mm -hmm. He's got a doctor's coat on, he's got a clipboard. um, And you know that this is Dr. Matthew Kudwallader. One unique beast. Thank you. 14 months. Good job. Um, You've traveled in similar. (laughs) um, Matthew Kudwallader. C A D W A L L A D E R. Matthew Cadwallader. Um, you've traveled in the same professional circles as him for a number of years. Um, there's always been a little bit of a flirtation there, but nothing's never really come of it because you're both incredibly busy people and you've kind of lost track of him for a while. But uh, he's a welcome sight and he's kind of at a loss for words as he sees you. Uh, um, okay, so Janie told me somebody was coming, but she was a little light on details. Um, you're Skylar Smith. Yeah, hi. That much I know. She neglected to mention you'd be here. She neglected to mention you'd be here. Well, that's Janie for you. You probably haven't met Janie. She's, um, she's a character. Yeah, and apparently she uses LinkedIn. Uh, you know, we're not all on the cutting edge of whatever it is you do these days. It's called Icarus. I'm sorry? It's called Icarus. I'm the brand spokesperson, so if you don't know, I obviously well, have to tell you. So it's nice to see you. Um, you. Who are all your friends? I was told that Mr. Winslow had a guest, but I wasn't expecting a... Well, I needed some of my staff with me, and, you know, we don't let Skylar travel okay. uh, unaccompanied. Well, you're the accountant, am I right? Yeah, I mean, yes. Okay, and you are the... Mascot. <laughs> right. Oh my god, is that Sad Girl? I, I, I yes. mean, I'm, I'm a huge fan. You know, she did that one album in 97. Oh, it's just haunting. And she stands up. She's like, I'm always happy to meet my fans. Uh, and she grabs both of his hands and gives him a kiss on both cheeks. And he visibly blushes. Ah! <laughs> um, I want to check his okay. stats and see what's going on here. Okay. Uh, give me a sciencing roll. I science. This one's fairly easy. Because you're close enough, you've got your hardware. He's not <laughs> actively trying to suppress 11. anything. Okay. Um, well, I mean, there's baseline, you know, heartbeat increase and you know, a, an uptick in brain waves and um, you know, increase in perspiration. But it's it's hard to get a read on exactly what's going on, and it seems have, like there have might. Have done any like social media stalking of him in the past? Oh yeah. Of okay. Course. What do I know about him? <laughs> uh, well, he's single. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that he was working abroad for a while in some war zones um, because he just really enjoys helping people. Um, he doesn't have any superpowers, but his specialization is those that do. And um, yeah, after a while, he just kind of stopped posting as often. You know, there's the obligatory happy birthdays and, you know, holiday snaps. And it's like no time has passed, and you're in each other's presence. Hmm. Um, and he looks around and he says, "I'm, I'm, can't believe I'm saying this, but it's very depressing here. So why don't we go back to my office and let's talk about Mr. Stan Winslow? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, that girl after you, uh, Nicola after you, and 
The rest? Uh, Skylar, please, this way. Um, I think we I are the rest. saw that post that you made with Dr. Armstrong. Tell oh, me yeah. all about it. Yeah, he's really cool. Um, I crushed his hand. Put an arm gently on your shoulders <laughs> as you walk I find along. His, uh, I sort of look and find to be respond very annoyed. coolly. <laughs> So you get to Dr. Kidwalader's office, um, and it's comfortable enough to fit all of you. Um, there's books from floor to ceiling of all, um, you know, they all look um, scholarly. That's the word I'm looking for. Um, a very eagle-eyed observer would notice that in between them there is a book of card and coin magic. Okay. Um, and he has you all take a seat. He's got a couple of lovely leather couches, a couple of chairs right in front of his his desk, and he sits down, leans back, puts his hand behind his head. So Stan Winslow, he's very, very old. Um, when he came into our care, I believe he was... In his mid eighties, and that was that was twenty four years ago. So you do the math. Um, he's surprisingly in very good shape for a man of his advanced age. So like almost one hundred and ten. Mm-hmm. Yes. I look at the accountant to yes. check my math. I'm a scientist, not a mathematician. Okay. Sorry, that's a joke. Um, it did not work. Stan. Stan has seen a lot of things in his time, uh, and they have taken their toll. He, like me, does not have powers, but he has spent his life surrounded by those that do, and in his twilight years, the community rallied to give him a, a safe place to be, where he could be protected not only by those that give care the way we do, but those that give care the way you do. Now, uh... My receptionist might have told you that he's in the isolation wing, and we do that for a number of reasons. We do that for his safety because he has written a lot of inflammatory things over the years, and revenge, as they say, is a dish best served cold. I believe Quentin Tarantino said that. Anyway. Um, and then there's the visions. Um, Stan doesn't sleep. Stan is constantly talking to himself. Um, in the moments when he's lucid, he will tell you things that he has seen in your past or your future or in the present but not here. And it's very difficult to be around him for any great length of time. And I want you to know all this because it could be dangerous when you go in there. But I thought you said he didn't have any powers? Yeah. I did. I did say that. Does he now have powers? Stan's hard to qualify. In the classic burn sense of superpower scaling, no, he does not. But there is something to Stan that keeps him in the isolation ward. And I will send you on your way. I unfortunately can't accompany you. Um, one of our guards will go with you. Um, they'll need to provide you access. They will stay there. Um, and I would advise you to move quickly and with purpose. Did he ever talk about, like, a really big guy with a glowy orb thing? I mean, I would have to look at his files. Stan says a lot of things. Be careful. I, I, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to understand here. What... What's so strange about this? What's so... You haven't met Stan. <laughs> All right, pause really quickly. Um, Hail Boogie sends their re-roll to Mr. Pope. Oh, please. Thank you, Mr. Boogie. Oh, sure. Or Miss Boogie. Uh, Mr. And Mr. Boogie. one unique beast sends their re-roll oh, to Jen. Thank you, beast. Okay. Um, so he presses a button, and a very large young woman with close-cropped blonde hair and orderly's garbs, um, with muscles that just seem to ripple with electricity, um, comes into the room, and he says, Take them to Mr. Winslow in the isolation wing. Be careful. Try to keep your visit to ten minutes or less. And stop by my office before you leave. Be nice to catch up for a couple. 
Okay. So she um, takes you out of the office. You walk down the the hallway, um, back towards the reception desk, and then out onto the main campus. And as you're crossing this large courtyard, you can see that a lot of the residents there are looking off to the east. And on the horizon, there's a very heavy storm coming, which is not all that uncommon. And um, the part of California that Riverside is in, it's really easy to take in all of the horizon, but it seems like it's moving very quick. Um, and it's very, very dark, a little too dark for this time of year. So the orderlies are kind of gently trying to get people back into their respective buildings. And the woman who's walking ahead of you says, storm's coming. Um, and sad girl kind of sidles up to you and she's like, I don't like this. It looks weird. No, him. Oh, him? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, um, yeah, I, I don't, I, I don't think, like, I didn't see anything. Like, I checked the weather. I didn't see this coming. Yeah, well, when you keep the kind of company we keep, you have to be ready for the uh, unexpected, no? Oh. Uh, I'll keep, keep that in mind. How long you been you, handsome? Uh, I've always been... You know what I mean. How long have you been you? Uh, to three months? <laughs> I, I, I wait. Oh, you've got so much to learn, Eho. Come, walk okay, with that girl. Okay. <clears throat> All right, and she puts her arm around yours, and she kind of looks at you like, oh, I see. Huh? Growing boy, no? I, what? <laughs> yeah. Um, and then you come to a smallish-looking building at the far end of the courtyard, and um, the young woman produces a key. Can oh. I stop everybody before we go in? Yes. Let's talk about this here before we go in. Let's yes. figure out what okay. we're going to do Well, she's fumbling for her keys we're anyway. So. Having to keep this short term, <clears throat> let's figure out exactly what we want to talk about. And now I can stop talking for a second. Uh, like, ask him what he did about the stuff he wrote in the article. <clears throat> ask him if he had seen anything like the dream we had, maybe? We should inquire if he has seen this uh, large-eyed creature before, yes. Well... Also, maybe uh, UCLA. if he's like, if other people he knows know about it, because he doesn't seem like the most reliable source. Mm -hmm. hmm. It's probably rude to ask why he's like still alive, even. I could if ask. He's super old. Yeah, you could. <laughs> I have no care for your uh, human pleasantries, so this is perfectly fine for me. I'll ask him how he has managed to stay alive, despite the fact that, to my knowledge, he should be. What's the word? Very dead, correct? Yeah, he. according to everything we know, he's uh, a, an average human, and he's in his his 110th year, at least. And that is abnormal. Yeah, yes. n normally we get to 80. On, uh, this is so short and sad. Okay, think about that later. Um, all right, so... Also, super delayed reaction. Sorry, the research that you did yeah. about the locations in downtown where you were, no real yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, I no useful information. Sorry, I just that occurred to me that I didn't touch base on that, and I apologize. I'm wondering <clears throat> if what we know about the echo chamber is that it was this flickering of images and sounds. I wonder if that's something similar to what he's experiencing. Hmm. I mean, he was alive in 1971. Maybe he went by this. Maybe he was there. That's. I mean, it was, oh, like it's. You said people got arrested, right? I mean, that's if he was still writing crime stuff. They were hospitalized. Oh, hospitalized. Uh -huh. And maybe, maybe he he knows about who that artist is. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah. Hmm. Don't mind me. I'm having what you would call an existential crisis on the fact that I have. 50 years in this form before I die. Well, no, I mean, your form's not like, like our, our well, I guess their form. It's, we, it, pronouns now. Uh, <laughs> so uh, she, she finally opens the door um, and it leads into uh, just a lobby with an elevator at the end of it. It doesn't appear that there's any stairs or anything else in this small building except the elevator. 
Um, so as you file in, she takes the key back out and locks the door behind you, um, slides open in an access panel, taps in a code, and you can see a brief flicker of electric energy go in front of the door. And and she, you said, like, she, does it, like, just seem like she's strong, or, or does it seem like... No, she's like literally, the, like, crackling with okay, electricity every fine. now and again. Just like, <laughs> you know. Like you do. Like yeah. you do. Um... So she beckons you into the elevator, and there are two buttons. There's the ground floor and the basement. She clicks the button, um, and in much the same way when you went into Dr. Armstrong's building, you can feel like you're being scanned. Um, it pauses on you for a second, you know, because you always get selected going through security. Yes. <laughs> it's randomly random, selected. Random, it has nothing to do with the fact that you're from the 7th dimension. That's um, not it's easy. getting a weird error from you because you're you, mm -hmm. and it's hard to get a read on you sometimes. Um, you guys are fine. And um, she presses the button, and she's like, all right, remember, you wanted to do this. And the elevator very slowly goes down and the lights kind of flicker as it does and the doors open and there's a long hallway with about six cells on each side and one at the end. Um, it's very quiet and there's periodic screams um, or laughs and it's a very claustrophobic space for as long as it is. And she's like, wouldn't you know it? He's at the end of the hall. Walk this way. This um, place is a hellhole. You get about three doors down, and there's a banging on one of the windows, and it's this um, older woman, kind of a Farrah Fawcett look, um, who every time she hits the glass, her uh, fists kind of burst in the frost. Mm -hmm. And she's like, I don't belong here. Let me out. Let me out. It's coming for me. It's coming for me. Um, and the orderly presses a button on the door and she says, Now, Mrs. Stone, we've talked about this. There's no one coming for you. I, I mean, no one bad's coming for you. You're here because this is a safe place for you to be. Do you understand me, Mrs. Stone? And she um, creates a giant hand out of ice that's flipping the bird. <laughs> I and respect this old I like her. Yeah. Yes. And then... Um, Wave a hole. Yeah. And she sees you and she's like, Hi! Mm -hmm. Hi! Come visit me on your way out! You remember me, Queen Mercury! Do we know that name? <clears throat> I don't know. Roll. Ah. Roll what? <laughs> uh, well, you've got contacts, right? And you're well yeah, informed? Yeah, I do have contacts. I, I, yes. I'm just gonna go out on a limb and say I don't know him. No, you don't know Queen Mercury. I don't know her. Um, Excuse me, orderly. Why is this place so aggressively miserable? Well, I mean, <clears throat> there are certain wards against um, intruders here. Um, it's very deep underground. Uh, it's a place where we put people who some would rather forget. I didn't design the place. I just work here. Hmm. Um, what'd you roll? Oh. Fifteen. So, you've heard of Queen Mercury. Um, she was big in the mid-70s. She had kind of this, um, well, yeah, this Farrah Fawcett kind of quality about her. Her main thing was that she was a weather controller. Um, and one of her notable publicity stunts was making it snow on Malibu Beach in the height of summer. Um, got her a lot of press. A lot of people kind of wrote her off as a one-trick pony, but she's a pretty skilled, uh, like I said, weather manipulator. Um, why she's here, you don't know, though. Oh, she hasn't been seen for a long 70s. time. Yeah. Hmm. She, but she would have been around when yeah. that UCLA thing yeah. Yeah. happened, maybe. Well, and also, weird weather happening right now. Yeah. She couldn't. We she sure this is secure? Yeah, could she be doing stuff from down here, out there? No, I mean, we've got so many dampeners on this place. I mean... <laughs> Immediately I'm like, okay, something's breaking down. I'm uh, gonna start scanning the network. Okay, cool. Um, give me some sciencing rolls. Um, and, you know, you see, you see the other windows, peep, shadows pacing back and forth, you know, so... Um, 23? Okay, yeah. 
how do you scan the network? I'll tap into their electrical grid. Okay. Um, and start looking for gaps in... I will let you do it, but one of you has to distract the orderly. And I'm going to make you roll for it. Because she's trained for this kind of thing. Because if you just tap into the grid, she's going to be like, what are you what are you doing? I think that's a, this is probably a Skylar thing unless oh, King Z's no. going to make trouble. Allow me. <clears throat> <laughs> yes, excuse me. Uh, orderly. Do you have a name? Miranda. Orderly Mir- Miranda. Now... Miranda's the daughter. Son of a bitch. Does King Z know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. he does. You're right. Wait a second. Are you the daughter of this man? That we are going to go see this, uh... Yeah, and? I'm sorry, wouldn't you want him in a more pleasant environment overall? You've never met my father, have you? No. I assume he's an asshole. I've been called that myself many times, so... Father said to be. My father's many things. My father is an asshole. But that's not why he's here. This is the safest place for him. And this way, I get to see him. Do you have any other questions about me and my family dynamic you would like to ask? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, the doctor said he has, like, visions of stuff? I imagine we're both just kind of blocking you off so they don't... Sure. Can't see you. I'm, yeah. (laughs) I'm probably like... Don't do that! Um, you're getting a bunch of crazy readings. I mean, there's there's electrical energy here. There's some sort of uh, plasma field, as far as you can tell. There's a hint of magic. Um, and it's it's all very old tech, so it's basically just a bunch of noise, but you can tell that there are definitely multiple things in place to keep things from getting too far south here. Are they... Are there disruptions in them? You don't know what a baseline looks like. Oh. <laughs> It's too old for me to even recognize that. Yeah. But they appear to be functioning at the moment, at the very least. Um. Think on that for a second. Yeah. Daddy sees things. Because we were all dealing with this, the thing that happened in the uh, the metro in LA, and we all had like the same dream last night, and yes. that's kind of weird. You're here to talk to him about the ghost in the subway? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. You got some fucking nerve, you know that? Well, they I just been tried told, to yes. kill a bunch of people, so... <sighs> she kicks one of the doors and echoes, and then inside you can hear somebody say, hey! Um... Sorry! Daddy's had a long, hard life, okay? Mm-hmm. That was the beginning and the end for him, okay? He met my mom when he was an old man, and he was lucky to have me. I'm the only one of his family that still talks to him. And I'm trying to do what I can to keep him comfortable down here, and I don't need people coming and agitating him, so I'll take you in. Does she look like uh, Queen Mercury? No. Okay. She's half Japanese, actually. Oh, huh. well... Here's the thing, though. Like, what if he's right about all of it? I can't tell you how many nights I've gone to sleep thinking about that. Think about what that means. If you saw those things that he wrote about, and I'm not saying you did, what does that mean? (laughs) I'm going to show her the selfie. (laughs) Put that away. Put that away. Okay. I apologize, ma'am. Fine. You want to talk to Daddy? You can talk to Daddy. Um, And she strong arms you, or tries to. She like bumps bumps into it it like it's a brick wall to her. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. (laughs) I think think she likes you, handsome. Sad girl, of course. (laughs) Um, So girl just really wants you to get some. I. I mean, you're you're a good looking guy. You know, you're you're muscle bound. You've got a good career. A high earner. Yeah. What's not to like? Um, so she Cats. exactly. Uh, uh, okay. Um, so she opens the door at the end of the hall, and it opens into what looks kind of like a nice living room from like the 
late seventies, early eighties. You know, it's a little tacky, um, but there's like a hi-fi playing records. Um, there's a fireplace that isn't really out putting any heat. It's just there for show. Um, there's a window that's got a high definition TV um, to simulate an outside view. And when you go in the room, she shuts the door behind you and it looks just like a door to another room in a house. Um, and it's generally very pleasant. And there's an old man in a rocking chair with a blanket over his legs and glasses down at the end of his nose, just kind of rocking back and forth. And you can hear him mumbling very quietly to himself. He seems completely unaware of your presence. Hmm. Um, so she turns around and puts a hand up. And she goes over and gently puts his, her hand on his shoulder and whispers to him. He kind of perks up for a second. And then he very deliberately turns his head and looks around. And he says, it's been forever since anyone came to visit me. Oh, please, please, come sit down. And he starts to get up, and his legs falter, and she gently puts him back down. And she comes up to you, and she says, Won't you join him on the sofa? Sure. Yeah. I, I take a seat on the sofa. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So. Uh, scoot over, man. Fine. I barely, like, <laughs> slowly um, lower myself just so I don't crash. Yeah. Uh, is, there, is there enough room for all, all well, of Well, there's, there's, like, a sofa. There's a love seat. There's a lazy boy, um, but he's got a bent wood rocking chair that he's in. So you all sit down, and you are faced with Stanley Winslow, who's 110 years old. He's very frail. Um, there's something about his eyes. It's very hard to put into words, but it's like... There was a meme going around the internet a couple years back of this owl who was born completely blind, but its eyes looked like constellations. That's a real yeah. thing. You can Google that. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a shade of that, except the patterns are continually shifting. Um, and as you sit there... He, toad. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I was, uh, was going to say cosmic owl, but I'll take that too. Yeah. You're all right! Yay! Um, we won the game. <laughs> yeah, right, it's been and then you die a natural death at a very old age. The end. That's been mutants and masterminds, folks. Um, <laughs> but he he tries to smile and looks like he's trying to think of something to say to you. And after a moment, he just kind of stares back into space and keeps mumbling to himself. I'm not buying for a second that he's not a super. That there, there's there's something strange here. Hi, Mr. Winslow. Uh, could we talk to you about what you saw in the subway a long time ago? So as if on cue, you hear this long peal of thunder, which is odd because you're underground. Um, that is that's concerning. strange, yeah. Yes. And he sits up straight and puts his hand on the bent or the, the armrest of the chair. Come again? The the ghosts. We read you out of there. Yeah. What did you think? I thought it was fascinating. He sits down. That was a long time ago. I've written so many more stories. I've seen so many more things. And all people remember me for is the ghosts in the subway. What are you most proud of? He reaches out his hand, and Miranda comes over and gently touches it. My baby girl. It's okay, honey. These people aren't going to hurt us. You can go away now. But daddy, go away. She slowly walks away. She opens the door, and she mouths to you, <laughs> um, and sad girl is walking around the perimeter just kind of looking for weaknesses and holes in the facade um, and he gets comfortable again and you hear another long peal of thunder closer this time um, 
All right, I'll tell you about the ghosts in the subway. What do you want to know? <laughs> I hold up my phone and show them the selfie because I'm getting a lot of my. Did they uh, look like this? <sighs> you saw them. Yeah, yesterday. Mm. You survived. Yeah. We caught one. You caught one? I killed many more, but yes, we have captured one. Well, they have captured one. Uh, that's impossible. How... How did you do that? I wrapped a steel beam around it. For a moment, there's a clarity in his voice, and he doesn't sound like a grizzled old man anymore. And there's a light in his eyes, like almost literally you can see his eyes brighten. And for a moment, he's very lucid. Oh, God. Oh, God, what you've done is so dangerous. Where were they? Subway? 7th Metro Station? There's a subway at 7th and what now? And Macy's. 7th Metro, it's, it's where you can you can transfer between uh, the, the Expo line and the Purple line and, and the... There's a lot of subway now. It's, it's been a while since I've been in Los Angeles. Yeah, you can get all the way to the, go from North Hollywood all the way to the beach. Mm -hmm. With two trains. <laughs> the future. <laughs> there used to be a Wessels Pretzels, but that's sadly shut down. I love you, Stephen. <laughs> I <laughs> took um, the Metro for a long time. <laughs> okay. I, I What I published in the paper has was heavily censored. I got a hot tip about something going on at the subway terminal building on 5th. 5th and Hill. Mm -hmm. Uh, grand. I eh, don't check. We'll figure it out later. It's a real place, trust me. Now it's apartments. Um, that there was some kind of disturbance going on. Um, and he's, as he talks, he gets a little faster, a little more agitated, but there's that clarity in his voice. Like, for the first time, he really is getting to tell his side of the story. Um, and we went down, me and my partner, we just wanted to see what was going on, and we... Who's your partner? Ray, Ray Harris, he, uh, he was a freelancer. He wrote here and there, but he always knew where the story was going to be. So I followed Ray. I followed him down into the subway. And I saw it. It was this machine. Not a machine. Uh, it's hard to describe. It was like radio antenna embedded in the wall and there was some sort of box in the signal in the in the in the middle that was giving off an ozone smell and blue electric light and coming from it were these things these beings of two dimensions that were made of glass and they came after us and we were able to escape but I don't know what happened after that point. I, I, shortly thereafter, they, they tore up all the rail tracks downtown, they closed down the subway, all the cars came in, and they paved it over for as much as I know. Did, uh, did Patient Zero have anything to do with it? Dr. Armstrong? Yeah. No. Okay. He, I mean, has, he has the one we caught yesterday, now. Oh no. Oh, no. What? And for a moment, he's very frail, and then his muscles tense up. <sighs> you shouldn't have gone down there, and you shouldn't have come here. Well, it's too late for that, unfortunately, so now we've got to figure out what to do. And his voice changes for a second, and the light completely goes out of his eyes. And where there had previously been eyes, they're now just black black voids and he says because now you've brought it here everybody roll for initiative oh Woo! <laughs> only took me an hour and a half sorry everybody i was well, crafting a world <laughs> oh how good. dare you let's use you. a re-roll on that yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i told you to re-roll my re -roll. Re -roll. Wow. hold on i need to get my stats almost got it but not much better here's a less than one hell yeah all right that i can work with <sighs> Hold on, let me uh, roll my initiative here. Okay, I got a big seven. Um, Steven, what'd you get? 23. 
Okay, Jennifer. Ten. Okay, Jody. Thirteen. Eric. Five. Okay, you will be going last. Um, what? Steven, you will be going first. Fantastic. Um, as soon as he says you brought it here, um, the lights shut off in the entire place, and you can hear this metallic ripping of the doors coming off their hinges in his room down the hallway. Um, and you, you felt that kind of electric hum when you were checking the, the grid to see the security. It's gone now. Completely gone. Okay. Um, and from him erupts some of these creatures, so you are beset by about seven of them in the room with you. Um, they're shifting back and forth. Um, Selfie time. <laughs> what was that? Selfie time. Yeah. Uh, trying to gain, um, trying to size up the room, basically. So, Steven, what are you going to do? Um... I am going to just deck one. Okay. So you're going to roll your fighting mm -hmm. against my parry. Yes, my close combat, correct? Uh, yes, exactly. Uh, we are looking at a 27. Yeah, that hits. Um, hold on, let me find my parry here. I know I should have found this soon. Um, so that's two degrees of success. Cool. Um, now I have to roll a toughness check, though. What is your the effect of that power? Uh, it is just a unarmed attack, okay. so I don't think there's anything. Um, it just should say there in that first block, just unarmed. Unarmed plus a DC twenty two. Okay, um, so I failed by one degree of uh, one degree, one degree failure. Um, so you knock its block off a little bit, and it's like its head kind of phases out of reality for a second and then reels back, but it's definitely off kilter. And I'm going to shout for Miranda. Okay. Um, no response right now. Uh, Jody. Uh, how, how is Mr. Winslow looking right now? After I mean, if you, things came out of him. Is he still alive? He's completely limp, so you can't tell. Yeah, dude was super possessed. Yeah, but... Uh, hmm. Can I get close enough to see if he yes, is, absolutely. if he's still alive, and if so, act in the same turn? Yes. Okay. So just like any other RPG, you can take a move and a standard action. Okay. Um, what are you trying to do once you get to him? If he is still alive, I want to protect him. Okay. Um, you don't have treatment, so do you or, have insight? Well, with, a, with a telekinetic shield, I'll protect him. Oh, okay, uh, great. Uh, but I was going to use just perception to see if he looks like he's like breathing. Okay, no, he's totally breathing. Okay. Um, but the telekinetic shield, I think, is a move action, so basically... Uh -huh. You can move okay. to him and then take the, the action to activate it. Okay. Um, but then it is on until you turn it off, yeah. basically. But yeah. you can't do anything else this turn. Okay, that's cool. fine. Checking on him is a free action, we'll say. Okay, yeah. Um, so so I, what does is, what is your telekinetic shield look like? Because you didn't activate it last game. Yeah, um, I think it's just, like, she's still figuring out how this works, so I think it isn't, it isn't anything elaborate, but it's sort of very much the, the size and shape of a giant, like, cell phone. <laughs> it doesn't look like... I was like, hoping for that. It doesn't look necessarily like a cell phone. It's just a shape she's very familiar with and comfortable with. So, and it's, so it's, it's a rectangle. Of, it's a rectangle, yeah. but it does have the sort of rounded edges. <laughs> does it have the button? It's, like a, so like it's, iPhone. it's still better than anything that was in the Ryan Reynolds Green Lantern movie, and I will allow it. And I'm a Green Lantern that, fan. That man's great. I met him today. <laughs> That's true. Eric actually did today. Did you really? Wait, what? <laughs> That's kind of awesome. That's um, cool. he's Hal Jordan. He didn't make it right. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow. Okay. Mm. That's weird. Uh, <laughs> um, he is still breathing. He is no longer talking to himself. Um, but yes, okay. the shield is big enough to cover you and maybe a couple other people. Yeah. I can affect. I can protect two other people. So if someone else needs to get behind it, I can protect them too. But right now, I'm just like. Look, his daughter was clearly really worried about him, and he's super old. It's not like he can fight, so yeah. this just seems like a thing to do. Um, he could be a conduit for evil, though, so just, like... Yeah. Well, aren't we all really fundamentally just conduits for evil and we choose good? Think on that. Oh Jennifer, God. it's your turn. <laughs> Breaking Bad. Um, Watch it. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm trying to put pieces together here. Okay. I learned that in the UCLA installation, there was audio and visual components. I'm thinking maybe we need to smash the record player, get that shut off. Okay. So I would like to try and do some time freezing to freeze any electronics that are 
nearby. Okay, so let me get your character sheet up because you got a lot of fun time powers, which yes, do. is the Chronomancer in the Mutants and Masterminds Basic Heroes Handbook, oh. more or less. I took some liberties. Um, and I could just have a paper copy of this, but you know, it's the I future, it's so. Fair, I think. Um, no, it's fine. Okay, so. <laughs> oh. Thank you. You're my favorite player. <laughs> Don't tell the others. Oh, oh awkward. Um, he tells me that a lot. Okay, so here's what we can do. Um, Except when he's telling you it's true. <laughs> you have time freeze, which is more of an attack. That's like right. if somebody's coming at you, you kind of stop Still time around them. Um, there's time traps, which I think the analogy I used when we were first building your character is like Quicksilver right. in the Days of Futures Past movie. Right. Um, which I think is a little more what I need to do here because it can be selective, right? Okay. I would posit that you might want to use quickness because okay. that way you're actually... You're moving fast, but you're also doing things fast. Doing things fast. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you can run fast, but that means that you can't also tie your shoe. But right. with quickness, you can. I can. So, um... Okay. Yeah, I'm going to make you roll for it, though. Um... I feel like this is still a science check. Um... And it's going to be... Not so high, but there's an element of danger. So, I need you to roll better than a 17. Okay. Which I did not do, so I will go ahead and burn this. Cool. Uh, that takes me to an 18. Uh, I'm sorry, to a 20. Okay, great. So that's still one uh, degree of success. So you, you achieve what you try to do. Um, you break up the record player. Do you want to get the TV? If I can. Okay, yeah. so yeah, you can do that in the same turn um, because you're very fast, but you're also able to you know unplug it and kind of break things gently. Um... And you notice that there is a sudden kind of white noise that had been in the room that was gone, and all of the creatures kind of stop and look at you. Um, and that's your turn. Yeah. So... Uh, can, can I hide in plain sight then? Yes, you can. Um, that's how I would like to finish my turn then. Great. <laughs> Where, what are you hiding behind, though? Because you have to have something to hide behind. So, there, what was near the TV? Um, was there like a faux fireplace? Yeah, there was a faux fireplace. Let's say there was a wet bar. That seems Perfect. like the kind of thing that would be in a den in the late 70s, early 80s, right? Yeah, let's do that then. It's um, just full of coconut lacroix. Uh, <laughs> we are in Riverside. It's the true enemy of it's, this campaign. It's true. It's true. Um, cool. So Sad Girl is actually going to take a second, and she is going to let out this um, plaintive wail. Um, not unlike a banshee's cry, but one of her nicknames was also La Llorona. Mm -hmm. um, so what she is trying to do is basically disrupt them. And I'm gonna roll for that. And she does. So. <laughs> um, two of them just go poof, like they disintegrate into a million uh, pitch black shards, and then disintegrate from reality. Kind of like, uh, I think the analogy I used last game was like a TV as it kind of fades into mm -hmm. static, like that. Um, so... I'm going to make a note to self to boost the algorithm on her album. <laughs> for sure. Because um, they just released it on 180-gram vinyl. I mean, it's beautiful. It's so good. You know, crossover, so many different genres. Anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track. Um, and one of them is going to come for you. Because okay. you did try to, you know, destroy something that was keeping them in line. Um, and it is going to... What's it going to do here? Okay. It is going to reach out an arm to you and fire just a dart of its energy at okay. you. So what is your parry? Uh, my parry... Or your dodge. My dodge is a nine and I am hiding. So. Okay. Um, right? Because parry is close combat, dodge is... Yeah, my parry, my parry is 8, my dodge is 9. Okay, so I have to beat a 19. And that is going to be... 21. So I just make it, and now you need to make a toughness check, which is going to be... Uh, you have to get better than 19. Eesh. Okay. Can I treat my defensive... So I have defensive attack. Is that going to help me here? No, you would have had to have it done that been. first. Yeah. Got it. So that's a 14 on the die, and I have a plus 7 to my toughness. 
Okay. So, so yeah, 21. you make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you're able to do your, your Neo thing and dodge out of the way, and it you see it in slow motion. It hits on the wall behind you and shatters in that same pitch black static. Uh, Eric, it's your turn. Good. All right. Um, I'm going to pick up the couch and throw it at them. Oh, boy. <laughs> you can do that. That is 100% something you can do. Okay. Uh, that is going to be uh, not great. Uh, let's see. 11. Yeah. Yeah. You just throw the couch. I throw the couch too hard. It hits the ceiling. <laughs> Great. And now there's peaches, pe- pieces of couch, peaches of couch. Peaches it's of a peach couch. colored mayonnaise couch. of peaches. Exactly. Um, of couch. They come cascading down. Um, you can hear Miranda screaming from the hallway, "Daddy!" And um, if you look out in the hallway for a second, you see those um, sparks of electricity gaining in intensity. But she's clearly fighting off something out there. Um, so top of the round, Steven, there are three more of these things in the room with you. Okay. I have the holding back advantage, so what I'd like to do is do my usual Z energy blasts. Okay. But I'd like to make it tiny, almost like I'm just going to hit these three and not the entire fucking room. That's very considerate of you. (laughs) Yes, I don't want to set everyone ablaze. I appreciate that. Or make them radioactive. Or radioactive. Too radioactive. So what does the holding back advantage do for you? Uh, well, let me double check. Holding back. Holding back means you possess a lot more power than you're letting on. Yet it, there is a lot of flavor text for this thing. And we love it. Yes, I love it. Um, when you overcome your mental blocks, become more powerful, your power level increased by four, you gain 60 points. Do you not want to do that then? No, okay, okay. With holding back, you must spend a hero point. I'll do that. Okay. And two conditions must be met where you can access the untapped reserve. Over half the team must be incapacitated. I can't do it. Okay, but we know that you have that now, so... I could nuke the that, place, apparently. Yeah, so that might come into play, but... I misunderstood something I bought. Your your Z energy, though, is still... Um, it's an area effect, but is, is it selective? Or what is the shape that that takes? Uh, it is a uh, blast. Okay. Five feet... Uh, it's like a 30-30 blast. Okay. That would be ill-advised in this tiny room, but it's it's your character, so I'm not going to tell you what to do. I am going to look at something really quickly. Okay, talk amongst yourselves. I'm just gonna keep doing my unarmed attacks because I'm still pretty. I'm. I'm. I'm You're a big boy. I'm fucking beefy, so you know. You're a big handsome boy. And I have chokehold, so I'm just gonna grab one by the neck. Okay. Um. So you need to get better than. They have backs, right? Something resembling that. They have neck-like areas, yes. Um, sorry, uh, you just need to get better than a 10. Wait, what is your um, power? Oh, it's just unarmed, right? Yeah, it's just an un- unarmed attack. What is the modifier for that? Uh, 16. Do it. That would be a 31. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Okay. Um, We're looking for a DC 22 here, Chuck. Okay, well, it does it. Oh. Yeah, it does. It's like your arm kind of goes through it. Oh, damn. I, I mean, you away. get a hold for a second, and it feels like it's crackling under your grasp like a pane of glass, but then in a moment, it's like its head disconnects and it moves past you. Have you ever played Super Hot? I'm just imagining the red guys from Super Hot mm-hmm. at this point. Is that the weird... It's a yeah, it's a First shooter, shooter, but it like the action only moves when you move. That's crazy. It's a puzzle game. It's yeah. fantastic. All right. We'll we'll talk about that later. Uh, it's uh, the most innovative shooter I've played in years. I love it. <laughs> Jody, it's your turn. Uh, so I'm guessing the my telekinetic projectiles have the same problem if it's a cone area effect. Yes, because it doesn't say it's selective, correct? Uh, can't remember. Indirect fixed point. You're, I think away. you have the area have, effect that's I have selective. selective. Okay. I, I, will, I will go ahead and say this. Uh, you can hit me and it's okay. Yeah, this does. this is a 60 foot cone. That's, I think, everyone in the room. And yeah. <laughs> well, I mean... 60 feet long, not oh, 60, 60 feet, feet wide. Okay. Yeah. Not 60 feet wide? Okay. Well, I mean, it's your power. How would you like that to manifest? Um, Actually, yeah. If, I, if you're okay getting I, hit. Uh, King Z, you're not like the big... You, you probably just know him because he destroyed uh, Santa Clarita a while back, but yeah, dude can take a hit. 
Okay, he look, you look like you can take a hit. Uh, I would like to use the shattered remains of the couch. I was going like, to say, there's the... tons of pieces of couch that you yeah, can use just, as telekinetic pieces. I mean, I, I'm just peaches of couch. Peaches of couch. Peaches of couch. I, I, knew couch. I, I know I have to drop the, drop the shield to do that, but yeah. he, I'm in front of him anyway, so he wouldn't cool. take any of that. So yeah, just... So what does it look like when you manifest that? Do they just kind of lift up? Is I there... think they shake, they lift up, and then they just go... <laughs> Okay, so um, a lot of force. Let's see. That is directed, or that is resisted, I believe, by fortitude, because um, it does not say. So let's go with fortitude. Um, and these guys are actually immune to fortitude effects. Okay. I'm gonna nerf that. I'm gonna pretend that they're not. Um, <laughs> Damn it on the fly. Exactly. Exactly. Sorry, these NPCs are no longer suitable for my needs. Um, Maybe they were when the, the TV was still on. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, there we go. Plot. You should write comic books. I should. Huh. Yeah. Disrupted their their telecom. There's no money in it. Don't worry about uh, it. <laughs> okay. Anyway. So let's see. You had to get better Wait, than a. <laughs> I write corporate. There's no it money in that DC either. 20. Mm -hmm. And I hate it. Aww. Sorry. Eh. This stat block is freaking me out here. Okay. Um, so they do not make it. So no, I have to Let's see, they get a condition. Does, does King Z have to roll this too? Yes, he does. Absolutely. So you've got to get better than a 20 um, with your will. That's a 23. You do it. Okay, so everybody neatly... He got hit by a throw pillow. Yeah, you, you get out of the way, and they are disrupted by um, chunks of couch, and they shatter. Um, he so just kind of ropes the back of his neck, kind of looks at you, and goes... <laughs> so there's no more of the shadow beasts in the room, but like I said, if you look out in the hallway, um, Miranda is definitely fighting something. It looks like there's more shadow creatures, and there are many of the doors that are open. Um, emerging from one appears to be Queen Mercury, but she has the same kind of blackness in her eyes as Stan did, and she is slowly coming down the hall towards you guys. Yeah, let's not have that happening. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna book it out, book it out to the hallway. Can we get out the door? You can get out the door, but then you're gonna be in the hallway with a bunch right. of these shadow yeah. demons and uh yeah, that's okay. That that's kinda We're the gonna plan. stop them now. Okay. Is, Great. Is Stan looks okay to leave. As um he is? he he is breathing heavily, but he looks up at you and just kinda nods, uh, and reaches out a very frail hand to you. I I'm I, not I I'll just pick him up. <laughs> okay. Whoa, oh, oh, oh big boy. Okay. Baby, baby, yeah. baby. I'm like, I got it, I got it, I got it, okay? Baby. 110-year-old baby. <laughs> you kind of look like a pizza delivery guy right now. <laughs> Just whatever you do, don't let them in, okay? I mean, in here. We won't. In here. You say that, and it's harder than you think. Oh, Just, you mean us, not you. Oh. Uh, they can take me as far as I'm concerned. Now I know there's more of them. Everything I know won't do a lick of good. If you can get me out of here, I might be able to help. But if I die here, you gotta tell the world the truth. We'll, we'll get you to Sorry, That's more to like Dr. Miranda Holmes. sounded like. Yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll take it. All right. I mean, they're related, right? Yeah, so. We'll, we'll get you to Dr. Armstrong, okay? If you can do it, I'm forever in your debt, and that's a mighty long time. Okay. So we're gonna keep the initiative order, but now you are in. I think you have the bad case of the immortalities. Hold on one sec. Here. On. Another player joins the fray. Uh oh. Um, what oh. is your agility, by the way? Uh, my agility is three. Okay. Well, you rolled first, so I also have a thirteen, but you will go before me. Okay. Um. All right. So there is a. Hallway full of these shadow people. There is a seemingly possessed Queen Mercury with her Farrah Fawcett hair blowing in this crazy Arctic wind, and she's being surrounded partially by gulfs of flame and snow bursts and thunder and lightning, and it's just kind of Thank an amazing operatic. What was that? Thank you for giving her the hair. Of I've course. been sitting here this whole time like, yeah, but does she have the hair? Of course she does. does she have the hair. That's what makes her Farrah Fawcett. Um, you know? What's the first description we got of her? What is the hair? She had a Farrah Fawcett. Ukidor. Thank, oh, Ukidor. Thank you. Thank you, Um, so yeah, it's, it's very operatic, this whole scene. Um, 
you see a very large creature. Um, it's hard to tell in this line, but it almost looks like they're made out of concrete with a pair of cargo shorts. <laughs> Okay. Emerging from one of the chambers, very confused. Um, it doesn't immediately look threatening, but who knows? That's one cargo shorts. Yeah. <laughs> I think the best bet here is going to be to go and do the burst and hit everything that can take the hit. All right. Steve. And, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. Oh, finish, you're your, first. finish your thought. Finish your thought. No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm out of. You're the lead. Like, as far as King Z is concerned, you're the leader, so he'd listen. Don't kill the innocent humans. Got it. And I am going to use my alternate ability for the Z-Energy Blast. Okay. The Blinding Bane. Okay. Yes. What is that resisted by? That is uh, alternate resistance dodge. Okay. Cool. Um, what do I have to beat? Uh, we are looking for a DC 20. Okay. So Queen Mercury does dodge. Um, she's able to kind of sidestep and put up a wall of ice just in, thick enough to protect your vision. Um, the shadow beasts are not so fortunate. Um, yeah, so... Uh, how many degrees do they fail by? It was an 18. Uh, we were looking for 20. Okay, so that is two degrees of failure. Great, they're disabled. Okay, so that means that they have a negative five on penalty checks. Great. Um, what does it look like when they're disabled? Um... So I described the Z energy blast as him kind of if like someone took a uh, green crayon and just kind of went to town. This is like someone took a white crayon and went to town. So <laughs> they are all just kind of like, they got like these white lightning things coming in and out of them. And they're all just kind of twitching. Love it. Okay. I say, I love it. Um, this you, club has everything. I love it. Do you want to move or anything? Um... Well, I am going to go ahead and try to throw my shoulder into the wall of ice she put up. Okay, so technically since you made an attack on this turn, you could make another movement and not have any penalty. JCD Bionic Man! Hey, thanks Woo! for the However, I would like to take this opportunity to remind you of extra effort, Ooh. which means that if you are willing to take a condition, you can gain another standard action this turn. Gimme. Okay, so you can do that, but what that means is that at the end of your turn, you become fatigued, and that means that you move at one less of your speed rank, and since you don't have any special speed abilities, that basically just means that you can move 15 feet as opposed to 30. I'll take. Which, you know, that still seems like a lot to me. I don't know. Not to me. I, I mean, don't <laughs> go through my day where I'm like, I'm going to move 30 feet right now. Anyway, um, so. I feel like 30 feet was such an arbitrary decision, to be honest. Agreed. Okay, so you are <laughs> trying to. It feels to... like good for grids. I just it. don't get why you all move so slowly. <laughs> We all can't move by bubble. Yeah, man. Dig it. Um, okay, so... Make a reference. You are trying to break the ice wall, oh, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to need you to... I can't dodge. So basically, what is your unarmed? Um, my unarmed is a plus uh, uh, 16. Okay, so I'm rolling a toughness check, and I have to be something... Uh, DC for un unarmed is 22. So. Okay, great. Um... Nope. Um, I bounce off. No, no, no. You you break it and it cool. shatters. But now you are face to face with the possessed ferrofaucetness of Queen Mercury, and she says hi. He's he's into it. <laughs> what did you roll? I, I must know. What did you roll to determine that he's into it? Hi, low. Okay. <laughs> well done. Well done. Yes. Um, all right. So Jennifer, it's your turn. Um. Now I will try, and uh, I'm going to do that, the the time bubble, okay. uh, time traps. Okay. I'm going to hit everything. I don't want to hurt Queen Mercury, though, Okay. Um, because I know that she's an innocent who's possessed, so I'd rather um, knock out with an AoE everybody else and then slow her down next time. Okay. So... Um, um, so go in, time traps, get out. Great. Um, and hide. So what does that look like? Uh, I think this one is... Hmm. They're kind of all over swarming, right? Mm -hmm. What is around here? 
Well, I mean, there's the doors that have been broken down. Yeah. Um, you know, it's safe to assume that there's probably some sort of debris from the walls and just... Let's keep the couch thing going. I'm going to pick up the shards of the couch. <laughs> okay. And aim them at them, line it up. Okay. Uh, and zip around the room, placing them in opportune areas to shatter. So uh, just the I shadow bag fail. is not clean mercury, right? Yeah, and I'm going to hit the, 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 exactly. the, 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 the Colossus thing. Too. Okay, cool. So... So they need to do a, it's a DC 23. That's to dodge. And if they don't dodge, then they have to roll to avoid damage. Right. So the shadow baddies definitely don't uh, dodge. Okay. And so I have to beat a DC 18. That's correct. Um, which they do, actually. Oh, okay. They're able to kind of see what you're doing oh, and darn. very quickly uh, uh, get out of your way. But Disappointing. the other guy... The Colossus does not. Okay. So he he takes a piece of couch to the head. Okay. And with a massive thud, falls back into the holding cell. Okay. Um, giant feet pop up, plop down, the whole thing. It's very comedic. Exactly. Yeah. So, um, is that it? Do you want to move? Right I want to get back out and okay. into a shadow. Okay, and great. Hiding. So you were totally able to do that. Sweet. Um, and there's still the miasma of all the weird mirror men who are floating around. Um, hey, like the title of this game. Yes. What? Uh, is that why? why it was... Yes. Just got yes, that. Dom, that face right there. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see. I'll try to reenact it. Oh, okay. Okay, so, King Z, <laughs> you are face-to-face with a pissed-off, possessed Queen Mercury. And I'm a little bit into it. Yeah, so she is actually going to reach out her hands and um, try to blast you in the face with ice. So what is your dodge? Seven. Okay. She di- She hits you. So I had to do uh, better than 17. I got a 20, not okay. natural, but modified. Um, and you need to beat a toughness roll of 22. Okay. Oof. So my toughness is 10. And you have and impervious, right? I have impervious of 6. So that means I'm rolling with the 16? No. That means that with impervious, um, if my ranks and damage for a power was less than 3 then I couldn't hit you. Mm. Um, so just whatever your toughness is there, plus 25, that's what you got to beat. Or, uh, no, no, sorry, sorry. Uh, maths! No. You have to beat a 22. Okay. And you roll the d20 plus whatever your toughness is. Alrighty. Uh, that's a 15. Okay. So that is one degree of failure. Okay. And you, my friend, get a negative one to further uh, checks to resist damage. Sad. And now I get to use the poker chips. I think it's my turn in that order. Oh. Oh shit, we did. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, sorry. That's okay. No, no, no. You're right. You totally did. So. I can. I can go now. That's yes, fine. go now. I'm so sorry. Uh, no, I was that's reading fine. the initiative chart wrong. No, that's fine. Uh, having seen what just happened, mm-hmm. uh, she uh, she doesn't know if this is a good idea, but she's going to like hurry over to. Um, uh, Brad, what's her hero name again? Queen Mercury. Uh, Queen Mercury, thank mm-hmm. you. And uh, I want to try to do, I want to try to use persuasion with uh, Fascinate. Okay. And just be like, look, you are the original influencer. You are so much stronger <laughs> than this. You can fight it. Okay, do I get a resistance to that? Uh, I mean, I guess I could just make a persuasion. Well, hold on, it's I have the rules right here because um, I did not have that pulled up. So let's just pause yeah, for a second. Yeah, it says use an interaction skill to entrance others. All right, hold on. I have the intimidate version of that one. Ah, the future. Okay, so use interaction skill to entrance others. Um, choose yeah, deception, intimidation, or persuasion. This is super persuasion. Okay, so I get to resist this with insight. So you're going to make a roll, I'm going to make a roll, and we will see what happens. 
feel like you've just summed up how to play an RPG. What? Actually, wait, hold on one sec. <laughs> I'm embarrassed that I don't know this right off the top of my head. Okay, well, okay Will. Okay. I'm going to roll right. with Will. Okay. Okay. Right? I got a 16. It's like a Jaffa cake. I got a 30. Oh, <laughs> okay. I love so, what Let that me means this. is that I am now entranced, you said, right? Yeah. Okay. And that means that I'm stunned, but may only pay attention to entrancing effect. Breaks three if threatened from allies, interaction, skill check, blah, blah, blah. So, stun for me means that she cannot take any actions this turn. Um. Which is cool, because her turn was next. Ooh. So for a moment, you see the shadows kind of flicker, and she looks at you like, help me. Um, We're trying. Uh, you have an uphill, uphill battle. Yeah. Uh, Jennifer, a couple of the shadow beasties are going to try and attack you. Cool. One uh, of them is going to do that same blast thing. Don't forget, they're, I am they're hidden. still disabled. That's right. That's right. Um, but that's all they can do. Oh man, um, yeah, whatever, the die roll is crap. It, it swings and a miss. I'm gonna try the other one, just in case. That one's slightly better, um, though not by much. Nope, it's a whole lot of no. So, a couple of... Eric, it's your turn. Okay, so we're in the hallway. Uh, his daughter's on one side of and a bunch of mirror men. She's starting to get a little overrun. And we need to get to the other side of that hallway. All right. Uh, I am oh, going... Oh, that smirk. That's I, dangerous. I, I, Fastball special. Fastball yeah, I'm just going to... I'm just going to try and literally charge my way through these these dudes. Okay. Now, that is a combat maneuver. Smash, right? Yes, exactly. Well, there's charge and there's smash. Okay. So, which would you prefer? I, uh, I feel like charge makes more sense. Okay. So, that means um, that you can do your speed rank in a straight line and then attack. But, the attack roll is at a negative two. Now, smash um, is not really appropriate here. So, yeah, do charge. Okay. Uh, I don't know... Since you don't have any, well, you do have one special movement power, but that's debatable. Um, yeah. So yeah, you're just moving at 30 feet. Yeah. So basically what that means is that you can move twice and then still attack. Okay. So yeah, 60 feet would pretty much get you to the end of the hallway. All right, and I'm rolling. So you are rolling to attack, So and it's close. You will be trying to beat our dodge, which is not great. Um, so basically, you just need to get better than a 10. All right, and this just would be the same as in my regular attack. Unarmed, yeah, 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 yeah. But it's a minus two. Uh, okay, that means so, a whole lot. Uh, that's not going to be fantastic. Um, and what would, what did I have to hit? Uh, 10. Yeah, yeah, I, I hit 10, thankfully. I'm okay. above 10. Great. Um, and now I get to try to resist with toughness. Not that I think this is going to be... 27? Yeah, that, that doesn't happen. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, what does that look like? Uh, I, I, it's a, literally, he just cradles this old man and, like, football, like, charges elbows through, like, and just, like, like a bowling ball, just, like, a... Nice defensive stance yeah. all the way. He just sends him flying yeah. up in the air. <laughs> awesome. Okay, cool. Uh, so, top of the round. Steven, it's your turn. Awesome. Um... So, how bad is Miranda looking right now? Miranda? Yeah. Um, she's got like six of them kind of dogpiling on her. Okay. Um, it doesn't seem like they're duplicating anymore. It definitely seems like what you did cut the signal. So whatever was there is there, but there aren't any more coming. You're dealing with, uh, I want to just call her Farrah Fawcett. Uh, Queen Mercury. Queen Mercury. I'm going to rush over there and... What does Smash do exactly? So, um, it's on one of these sheets here. It's, it's um, this guy. Yeah. Ah, uh, the green one. Exactly. It allows you to smash. <laughs> Funny that. Negative five attack if versus a held object. Hold on, I'm getting more detail here. Thank you all for your patience. Okay. 
So, you attempt to damage or break an object held or worn by an opponent. Yeah, that's not, not really appropriate here. It's not. Okay. Um, so that's what a smash attack is. Yes. So. Great. Okay, I would like to aid her, though. Okay. What do you want to do? I'm going to uh, just kind of put a shoulder into it and try to get these things off of her the best I can. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll say that she kind of intervenes then to take a turn, since you're assisting, um, mm -hmm. and then gives her... Uh, actually, do an attack check. Yes. You gotta, you gotta ten. Be, Yes. Uh, that is a ni 19 minus 1, 18 plus... Yeah. Uh, the minus okay. one's only to resist further damage. Oh, okay. Not cool. on any other rolls. <clears throat> um, so that's, that's cool. Uh, cool. So she's got a plus two to her attack, and she is... It's 37 in total. Very well done. Um, so that's 14. So, so, yeah. She definitely hits them, and they unfortunately resist, but she is able to at least extend a little bit so they're not right on top of her. Okay. Okay. Um, Jody, it's your turn. Not Jen's, like it was last turn. <laughs> That's fine. Uh, well, she asked. She asked me to help her. So how how do we help you? How do we stop this? You gotta get rid of them all. Something's inside me. I don't know if you can get it out. We're gonna try. And we got. It. Sorry. Go ahead. We got it. He, they left him, Mr. Winslow. Okay. Um. I'm trying to think what you could do to to actually get it out. Um, yeah, I mean, there, I, there's telekinetic move. I don't think there's a. Yeah, there's, might rip her spine out. Exactly. Actually. Well, and that's only Oops. for inanimate objects. Just rip out yeah. pieces till you find the one you need. You can't use treatment no, because I didn't that's trained keep me. only. <laughs> yeah, um, I mean, how vital is the small intestine really? I mean, the spleen really. You only need part of the liver. It regrows. I mean, there, there's disarming that issues still from attacking, but I don't know if that No, that's, that's actually that. like mm -hmm. taking something away. Yeah. Um, she says, knock me out. Knock me out. If I'm unconscious, maybe it'll go away. Uh, okay. Um, and I'm really bad at punching, so I'm going to pick up one of the pieces of couch. Okay, on, great. And um, uh, I, I guess that would be... A, a telekinetic throw? Yeah, a telekinetic projectile. Okay. One moment, please. Okay. She feels uh, really bad about this. Great. So she's not going to try to dodge, but she will try to avoid the attack. Um, I think she does. I wonder if she can knock her out. I don't think okay. that's what um, frequencies. Unfortunately, in your attempt to do so, the shadowy presence kind of raises back up. And now you've got this slightly leathery older woman with fair faucet hair and pitch black eyes who's now grinning demonically at you. Uh, that didn't work. Mm, you're right. It didn't. Uh, and now it's her turn. <laughs> so she is going to take a swing at you, Jody. Oh, no. Okay. What is your parry? Two. Um, actually, sorry, dodge. What? Three. Okay, great. I have a, um, I have a good toughness. Uh, so, what's, what, what does impervious do? Um, what rank of impervious do you have? Eight. Okay. So that means that if my ranks in damage were less than four, you could pretty much ignore it. Okay. But they're not. Okay. So I'm going to roll to attack, and she points one finger at you, and this jet of flame erupts. So I'm trying to beat a 12 with my attack. Okay. And I do. Okay. So uh, your toughness is what? 10. Okay, so you need to get better than a 22. So roll the die and add your toughness. Oh, okay, that's. I have a bunch of rerolls. <laughs> I'm gonna spend one of those. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, uh, so that's 23. Okay, cool. So you succeed. So you're able to. You had a nat one the first time. So. Oh boy! <laughs> yes, that would have been double plus ungood. Yeah. Okay. Um. So she's not happy about that, and she skids back towards the elevator door with um, a gust of wind that blows your hair back. Um. So that would be Jennifer's turn. Um, I will. She's closer than the other big guy, right? Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and get in there and. Tide Tracer. Okay. 
So, that is an affliction. Now, what I have to do is resist it. Right. Or try to exist it, uh, resist it. And there we go. Um, and it's resisted by will. So give me one moment. And we are talking about Queen Mercury here, right? Yeah. We don't know what the big guy does yet, uh, but it doesn't seem like Skylar has a hold of this. So Okay. He's Do also I... still knocked out, right? Well, yeah. he's stirring a little bit. Oh, and damn he, it. he didn't necessarily seem possessed yet either. So. Hey, guys, let's go. <laughs> okay, so she does not make her dodge. She does cool. not resist it. Um, so she is currently dazed, which means okay. that she can only take a single standard action. And that also means that on her next turn... Um, on your next turn, she has to make another resistance check. So there we go. Okay. And then I'm going to go duck back into the shadows. Cool. Sort of bracing for the the other guy to come Great. at us. Um, so the shadow guys are going to go for you. Or no, you were trying to get them off Miranda, right? Yes. Okay, so they're going to try to go for you. Okay. Uh, what's your parry? My parry is 10. Okay. Sorry, totally had a brain fart there for a second. Um, they do not make it. They swing and a miss at you. All right. Cool. So there you go. Eric, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, so your, your goal is to get to the elevator, right? Yeah. Okay. So now, as much progress as you've made, Queen Mercury is kind of floating back towards the elevator. Okay. She's near me? Mm-hmm. And are there, like, things near me besides her? No. All right. Just Stan. Okay. <laughs> Don't this don't, I'm gonna, don't hurt Stan. I'm gonna set him Stan's down. Stan's a very dear baby, NPC baby, to me. Baby, baby, yeah. baby. I'm gonna set him down gently, and then just try and punch her. <laughs> Great. You can definitely try to do that. Yeah. So you need. She didn't want to get knocked out. I you mean, need to. It's my killer. Beat an eighteen. Okay. Don't kill her. Uh, yeah, I hit a uh, nineteen. Great. And what is your range? Twenty-seven. I gotta beat a twenty-seven. Yeah. Yeah, I don't do that. <laughs> so, I am so Matt, um, that's almost four degrees of failure. That's three degrees of failure. So what that means is she was dazed. And now, <laughs> oh boy, um, she is staggered, um, which means that she is dazed and hindered. So she can only take standard actions and she can only move half her speed, so she is not looking good. Oh my god. And you you punched who had previously been a- I punched an old woman. A little bit of a salty <laughs> but nice old lady. She was attacking you. It's okay. Um, she just tried to zap me, if that makes you feel better. And for what it's worth, sad girls in the background singing her song, trying to defend Our insurance you. plan does cover this. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. So she is- she's- you know, not in great shape, but uh, she she's still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and with that is the top of the round. Steven, it's your turn. All right. Um, yeah, so she's still standing? Mm-hmm. Is she within 15 feet of me? Yes. Cool. I'm going to punch her. <laughs> okay. So you're going to close the distance and, and punch the nice old lady Remember again. the don't kill the innocents thing. Yeah, you're not killers. Uh, that is 17 plus 16. Yes, uh, that, that... Okay, yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, and what is the DC for that? Uh, DC 22. Nope. Um, so she just gets a negative one to resist more... Hi, Ivana. Thank you very um, much, Ivana. Thank you. Um... She has a negative one on her next uh, resistance check, but she is still got the same conditions. She's not down yet, but she's not I looking I thought good. I'd finish it. Yeah. Um, yeah I'm just you, sitting there like, oh. You can see the I weird blackness kind ah. of seeping out of her eyes, and the weather effects are starting to fade a little bit, and she's definitely staggering on her feet, but there's fight left there yet. Um, Jody, it's your turn. Uh, well, she did give the finger to the orderly, so. That's true. I, I, Total oh, party chill. Woo! Hey guys, how's Love it going? The name. Thanks for coming and hanging out. They're out of San Francisco. Oh, awesome. Yeah, super cool. Nice, thank you. Hey. I'm in San Francisco. Will Coleman, bienvenue. The cabaret? Uh, yes. Hey. And thank oh, you for the resubs, Vana. Uh, and Blep, too. Blep. 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 
Yeah, she feels nope. she doesn't feel like she can hit the hit the old lady again. <laughs> even though it seems like the thing Come that all the now. kids are doing. Uh, so she is going to total, total party chill gives you a reroll. Thanks, guys. Nice. Hey. Uh, she's going to go over and try to uh, uh, telekinesis projectile at the ones on Miranda. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, so, oh, tippy twenty-two. Two twenty-four. Yeah. Two. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Awesome. You all picked a very exciting point to join the game. Yeah. Um, I was an old woman. <laughs> And, and I we, helped. And shadowy we mirror, mirror men it? from beyond existence, you know. It's true. We're a little more distracted by the fact we just all punched Shara Fawcett. 110-year-old yeah. yeah. Stan Winslow. Yeah. Fun yeah. fact, Stan Winslow is a character that appears in a lot of my writing. Oh. Um, but that's neither here nor there. So cool. you are trying to telekinetic projectile the ones that, that are, are attacking Miranda. Yeah. And that is resisted by what again? I'm sorry. Yeah, those were I will remember it said, next time. Did you say fortitude or die? Uh, no, will. I think we said will. will. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't um, say on here. Okay. Um, no, they, they do not do that. So they have to make a toughness check, which they do. They do make that. Barf. Um, but just barely. So, there you go. Okay, and I also yelled to Miranda, we have your father. And then she, with a burst of strength, knocks them off. Um, they don't shatter, but she's able to get free, and she comes towards you, Chuck, um, and she gently takes her father from you and starts pounding on the door for the elevator, um, which seems like it's taking a very long time. Um, so we do in those places. What was that? They always do in those. Oh, places. Of course, you know. It seems like this. Mm -hmm. um, when you know the maintenance I'm guy wasn't available loose. until next week, so because otherwise it's pretty good. But anyway, um, Queen Mercury is going to actually um, generate an ice field in front of all of you. So I need you to make a. Um, Dodge check, and you have to get better than a 17. Can I use Uncanny Dodge here? Is yes, that... yes you can. Tell the audience what Uncanny Dodge uh, is. I am not vulnerable when I am surprised or caught off guard. Yes, so that's good. So I'm spinning the real quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, passed. Okay. Uh, Failed the first time. I'm gonna Bad. do a re This is why rerolls are wonderful. What am I trying yes. to be? Thank 17. you guys for the rerolls. Okay. We very much appreciate right. it. This is a rough... Uh, oh, uh, 18. Okay, great. 18. Okay, great. So the ice spreads out in front of you, but you're all able to find your footing. You, it's like it doesn't even exist. Um, and she's frustratedly screaming, and tears are coming down her face, and the blackness is still kind of filtering out of her eyes, and she's like, I just want to leave! I just want to get out! Um, and the big mortar guy... Puts a massive hand down in front of her and says, Barbara, stop acting out! Um, and as if on cue, the elevator doors open. This giant face with these marble eyes turns to you. And somewhere between the thing and the rock giant in uh, The NeverEnding that's Story. Exactly what yeah, I'm that's imagining. what I was picturing. Um, too. But a little smoother. So I guess like concrete, the comic character. But yeah, mm -hmm. you know, fill in the, your own blanks there. He, with a massive hand, pushes the shadow, uh, the, the mirror men out of the way and says, run! So the door opens. Uh, Miranda gets in with Stan. Um, you all tumble in, but Queen Mercury is still standing there. Do you want to leave her behind or do you want to take her with you? I think is she conscious? Yeah, I mean... She, She's still possessed. Something, yeah, something is keeping her upright. I'm going to suck a puncher. Cool. You sucker punched that old lady. Uh, you got to get better than a 20. Oh. Level. That's a flat 30. Actually, no, oh. wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on. Um, oh, shoot. Yeah, well, it doesn't matter. I mean, whatever modifier she's got. Yes, you, you definitely hit. I'm going to roll for toughness, though, just in case. Uh, what do I have to beat? We're still looking at 22. Nope. Um, cool. So that fails by one degree of failure, so she just gets another minus one. And as she comes rushing towards you, fortunately, the elevator door is closed just in time. 
as you're going up um, without the den of combat I around panicked. you. So we have her with us, right? No. Oh. She's still downstairs. That's fine. Yeah, she was basically rushing at us. I just... Bah! I thought you knocked her out so we could take her. Uh, that was my plan. But she didn't go down. Yes, so then the elevator door was closed and I'm just like... Got it. I panicked. I apologize. I, I punched her too. Real real hard. Yeah, same. I didn't know I punched that hard. I uh, I do know how hard I punch and I am... Uh, not feeling great about myself right now. Oh, and sad girl's there too. She goes over to Miranda and Stan. She's whispering, like, put him down. And she's got his hand in her, or his head in her hand, and she's singing him a very sweet song. He puts a hand on her face and he smiles. Um, the elevator doors open. Uh, Miranda stumbles out in front of you. She's sparking with electricity very intensely at this point. Um, she's fumbling for her keys when the door opens and um, Dr. Kidwallader is surrounded by about a dozen heavily armed guards with very advanced looking weapons all bearing down on you. And he takes a deep breath and he's like, Nicola, what happened? What happened? What, whatever the things are, they're here. Um, and the storm is just raging like a tempest in the background. There's like sheets of rain falling sideways. And he's like, you've got to get out of here. You at least have to get out of this building. We can contain whatever's down there, but you have to get out. Um, whatever it is, it's got Queen Mercury. And there's there's more there. Turn off any any music, any any TVs, anything electronic. Get it off and away. Right, right, right. Uh, I look at him. I want to make sure I have the eidetic memory. I want to make sure he matches. He does. Okay. Yeah, it is it is him. He's, okay. He's the same man that you saw earlier okay. today. Um, so he barks some orders to the men, and about half a dozen of them go in and open the elevator door and head down, and the other six surround you all and are ushering you into one of the protected buildings. Um, Miranda and Sad Girl have Stan, and um, it's very difficult to move. All of your movement is slowed by about half. You see it basically as these pinpricks frozen in the air that you can kind of casually brush out of the way, but there's so many of them. This is a storm like anything you've ever seen before. Um, and eventually you do get inside one of the safe buildings. Yes. Can I tell, when I was scanning the net before, mm -hmm. did I see anything ping of someone who is a weather controller? No. But again, you don't know what a baseline looked like there. That's true. So in that particular network, it was really hard to tell what was going on because it was so old. Yeah. Um, you know, something would be said for old school stuff. Mm -hmm. um, so they get you in a protected facility and um, the doors close and you see that same glimmer of, of electricity pass over the windows indicating some sort of shield is active. Um, and just as it... It goes up that same hovering uh, translucent skeleton that's on fire comes in and he's like, I'm glad you're all safe. Um, oh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you. And the room is filled with all of these very old people. Um, you know, some of them are very obviously superheroes or metahumans of some sort, some just looking like normal old people and they're all very, very scared. Um, the nurses are doing what they can to boost morale, but things are... are... You're going to be fine. We're here. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. I said that a time or two myself. Now look at me. Uh, total party chill. Thank, Thank you for the bits. Thanks, guys. Um, and Sad Girl sings her hit. What is Sad Girl's hit song, everybody? Think about that for a second, because that's what she's singing, and it's lovely, and it bounces off the walls and it has this warm honey tone unlike anything that you've heard before. You've heard the, the song played on the radio. You It's on when you go to Vaughn's, but this is different because this is real and she's unaccompanied. Um, and there's a piece that comes over the room that is immediately um, destroyed by a very large explosion outside. Um, you see one of the remaining guards who had gone down to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Queen Mercury come running up to the door, smack, 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 and he is frozen with a blast of ice, and in the next instant, he is shattered with a fireball. And she comes floating over. Any of you that can help, we need you to help. Eyes pitch black um, and starts knocking on the door. Let me in. I am going to set 
every trap I can. Okay. I'm Z-blasting her ass. Here's the thing, though. That means that you have to open the door and drop the shields, which means that everybody in that room, regardless of their capacity, oh, is a potential victim. Not saying you can't do that. Just want you to weigh the circumstances. Do we know any of these heroes? Hold on a sec. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, Vana, Blep, and Tip22, I'll give you re oh, awesome. Sorry I didn't see those till right now. Um, Blood, you have a great screen name. Yeah, way. that's a really, really good Quest, love that. question for you. Can I manipulate things outside with the telekinesis? You've never tried. Maybe. All hail the boogie? I'm gonna... I mean, in theory, yes, but you know for a fact there's some sort of energy field there. It's not something you've ever attempted with your powers. I'm gonna... It's if a... you want to do this, I'm going to require you to put forth extra effort to do okay. a power stunt, which okay. means that if you do that, you will be fatigued. Okay. okay. And, and I spend a hero point to do that? Mm. No. This oh. is something you can do on okay. every single turn if you want to, although each time you do it, you get more and more fatigued to the point of passing out. I'm going to try it. Okay. Um, And I think the only thing that's... Really in range are the chunks of the dude she just blew up. So <laughs> oh. Oh. okay, so yes, there are chunks of dude that you can use. <laughs> um, I uh, if this was Phoenix Dawn Command, I'd be writing that down on the environmental <laughs> effects that you can use. Um, is there, is there there's, there's like planters outside, there's um, pavers, there's a lot of stuff out okay, there. I'm gonna throw pavers at her then if I can. Okay. Much All right, more. and I, nice. I hate to keep asking you this, but um, it's resisted by will, more. right? Okay, that's what you. And say. I've got to do a twenty. Hashtag chunks of dude. <laughs> no. Okay, so now I have to roll Every for damage. Just... It's terrible. And, and I... that is uh, two degrees of failure, which means that she is dazed. So you've been able to. Knock her upside the head with a paver, um, and she drops to the ground, um, but she is still furiously set on coming inside. Did she recover from, like, the previous? Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Can, can the shield, like, keep her out? Like, what? what is this, this shield? Oh. I don't know. You can ask Dr. Kim Wall, whatever. I mean, is he in there with yeah. us now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. 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 What, what's what's protecting us here? Well, it's a, it's a combination of things. I mean, it's... Quickly. Uh, it's raw energy. I don't know. I'm. Who's controlling it? The the main control center is is in the basement of this building. This is the safest location in the entire complex, Nicola. Okay. Uh... Listen. Based on what I've heard about Stan's ramblings and what you told me when you first got here, cutting the power could potentially render whatever's going on inert. But it also leaves us defenseless. Is it worth We're it? We're not defenseless. I hope you're right. Look around. Do it. Go for it. Um, Chuck, mm -hmm. I need you to rally everybody here while we go shut this down. Rally people. That's mm -hmm. not. I. It's just like numbers. Just assemble them. Get them to line up. They know what to do. Okay. Um. Let's go. Okay. Ugh. I'm done. All right. Okay. So tell me what's going on. The goal is to get the residents. Okay. Anybody who has the ability to still control any semblance of their power get it together so they can do that. Okay. We are going to turn off any electronic devices nearby. Okay. Um, we are going to unplug the network. We're gonna shut down the power grid and hope that the energy holds if it can. Okay. Um, but if it doesn't, then we're gonna be ready. Okay. We'll set up as many physical barriers and traps as we can. Um, so this is a montage of you basically trying to rally the uh, the residents to action. Yep. Um, there's an older punk rock um, 
guy. He's it's about five foot two. He's a Latino. He's got a, a kind of patched up leather jacket. <laughs> um, who takes this really menacing stance and unhinges his jaw and says, "I'm ready." Hell yeah! Um, I missed that. That's for you, Stephen. Thank you. Um, that was the character that I played in the Changeling game that we were in. <laughs> Billy Ruin, he's back. <laughs> Um, great. Yeah. Thank you. I'm very proud That's of that. Cool. He was great. Um, there is an older woman who takes a deep breath and then basically becomes a whirlwind. Um, and there's a few other people with various special effects. And you've got about a dozen people ranging in age from about 50 to about 80 who are willing to help you. Um, everyone else is being ushered down into the basement. Dr. Kidwallader is like, I'm heading down with residents. I'm gonna shut the power off. If this goes right, we I, got this. I, all right, all right, Plus. all right, fine. Let's go. Bye. Nice to see you. <laughs> okay. We'll talk later. So there are uh, painfully long Maybe minutes long. while they oh. get everybody downstairs. Um, there's this moment of silence where there's an audible. <laughs> of all the power dropping. Um, you can see the crackle of that energy dissipate, and Queen Mercury had actually been doing a concentrated fire blast right on the door. Um, she sees that she no longer has to, and she steps forward and slowly opens the doors. Um, I would like to have a time trap laid ready to go. Okay. And I would like to greet her with a Z blast. Could we actually do the, uh, what's it called, uh, team attack? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. How is that going to work? Well, you have time manipulation powers, and I vomit nukes. It's I ask again, much. how are you going to do that? Tell me, explain to me how this is going to work. You hold her and, in place. And I then I'll that. make you roll for it. Okay, yeah. She's going to hold her in place. I'm going to fire. Essentially, we're going to get her in. I'm going to slow time go as best I can, kind of tie her up and lock her down. Okay. I'm not going to make you do a time trap for that. Well... I guess yeah, it, no, it could be no. a quickness, but really what I'm trying no, to do it's, is, it's a time is lock her down yeah, that's and fine. do some damage while I'm at it. Cool. So. Yes, we can do that. We will allow that. <laughs> that is something you can do. Okay, and it's selective, which is cool. I will select her and any shadowy things nearby. She does not resist. Uh, yeah, you, you time trap the hell out of her. Hell yeah. Cool. Um, and she is definitely dazed. Um, and she's, she got punched in the face a lot. Yeah, she is. She is not doing well. So, Stephen, what do I have to roll to resist your your Z blast again? Uh, we are looking for fortitude with the difficulty of twenty five. Okay. And is Team Attack going to give us a Team Attack? Uh, yes. So, Stephen, since you she succeeded on her roll, you unless either of you want to help too. Uh, yeah. It's a splash page. Get in on it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I... So the attack is Steven, and any success that you grant him will add to a possible total of plus five to your attack. Okay. Okay? Okay. Mm. Think about that for a sec. So you're holding her still, and then you're spitting on her. I also kind of want to... Can I throw one more thing in for flavor? Yes. Okay. I'm going to take a pot of coffee and dump it on her carry style. Had it above the door. Oh, we're all gonna laugh at you. <laughs> I love that movie. <laughs> I would like to like, like maybe like right as the thing hits her, like come in and just punch her. <laughs> yes. And I can do another spray of pavers at her. Okay, so you guys need to roll better than a ten um, on an attack check. So just roll your ranged attack, whatever. You just have to beat a ten. Okay, this isn't the projectiles? Well, I mean, it is, but okay. just to... It's essentially just adding to Steven's attack. Where, where is Rain? Uh, it's basically your agility. So okay. you just, yeah. Unless you bought Rex on that. Uh, that's Correct. a 19. And she did not. I also got a 19. Okay, great. Nice. So Steven, you get to make your attack check with a plus five. Okay, however, this is a burst. Mm -hmm. So technically, she needs to roll like a 30? Yeah. That's exactly right. what that means. And as she comes in and walks into that, I say, we want to talk to you, not whatever you're wearing. So she did not get out of the way. What do I have to do for my toughness check? Uh, for that one, let's, let me double check. It's 25 plus whatever your rank in that power is. Yeah, we're looking at 35. Hmm. <sighs> Uh, 
I hope I didn't incinerate her. I did roll a natural one. Oh! Um, which is four degrees of failure. <laughs> and uh, that does mean in the damage scale of mutants and masterminds that she is incapacitated now. Good. By default, combat in mutants and masterminds is not meant to be fatal. Mirror oh, men are God. different. They're they're minions. They're from beyond reality. So let's not worry so much about them. Cool. Let's worry about this nice old lady that you just completely incapacitated. So in a brilliant kind of double page spread, we see you projecting your projectiles and your doing your thing and you've set up your time trap including a pot of hot coffee and all of a sudden you <sighs> unleash this furious blast of radioactive fire um, which like she does try to resist for a second and then all of her powers fade you see the blackness fade from her eyes she drops to her knees and she says thank you and falls flat on her face. Well, by the way, it was a 30, 30 thing, so any, like, minions around her... Oh, no, did. it was just her. It okay. Was just her. Cool. Um, and I'm assuming all the nice old people were behind you. Let's say that, because yeah, otherwise please. that would be terrible. Yes. Um, so the presence that is within her kind of hovers in space for a second, and it starts to slowly move towards Stan when Miranda stands up and makes a beeline for it, and it sucks it, it it's almost like a vacuum back out the door and it is sucked up into this cyclone of a storm and the storm gets darker and darker for a moment until it culminates in a giant thunderclap and just as suddenly as it appeared it disappears and the southern california sunshine returns and there's a moisture and a stillness in the air that's wonderful and uh billy ruin the old punk rocker Puts his jaw back in place and says, ha, kids today. And uh, goes and does something. <laughs> <laughs> goes and has a cigarette. Like, Sure, yeah, he does. He goes outside, he actually kind of nudges right past you again. He bumps into you and bounces off you. Oh, Remember, sorry. he's five foot two. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and he, You're all right, kid. Goes and smokes a cigarette. Um, very slowly, Dr. Kidwallader and the residents come back up, and um, he runs over to you and puts his hands on your shoulders. He's like, are you okay? Of course we're okay. Okay, great. <laughs> she what, sort of uh, her shoulders back into What place. just happened here? I nuked her, and he punched her, and she shot stuff at her, and she froze her in time. Someone get this woman medical attention! Um, and there's a couple of orderlies that rush over, take her vitals, look at, up at him, and nod. Um, and then he turns back to Miranda and Sad Girl, who are now standing there with Stan in Miranda's arms, and she's crying. Um, and Sad Girl looks at you and just shakes her head. Oh. Miranda leans down to Stan, who moves his lips. She beckons you over. He doesn't have a lot, a lot of time left, but he wanted to say something to you. Sten raises a very frail hand. Puts it on your hand, actually. You're all very strong in ways that I never was. For all the good that I did, I could never do what you do. But you've seen it now. I've seen them. Go to UCLA. Look up the echo chamber. There are others. But I'm too old and I don't remember where they are. I'm sorry. We will find them. You, you did really good. Thanks, kid. And then he goes limp. And that's where we're going to end it for tonight. Oof. So for those of you who joined in the past half hour, you missed a, a, quite a lot of combat, a lot of exposition in that first hour and some change. Um, everybody did really, really well. I'm exceptionally proud of all of you. And now we get a better flow for how combat is really supposed to go. Um, and by the time next episode comes around, it'll work some specifics and we know what to look for. Um, but yes, the 
prime mirror man has evaporated into the atmosphere, and your next stop is UCLA. So nice with, one. Exactly. Go to, uh, well, I can't think of any iconic West Side locations right now. I'm tired and it's Monday night. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let's go around the table. Um, tell everybody who you are again, where they can find you, what you are doing, anything you want to share, um, and so on and so forth. Steven. Oh, I'm starting. Hello, I'm Stephen Pope. You can find me online at Stephen J. Pope 22. If you find me charming in any way, shape, or form, one, please tell me. I'm horribly insecure. And two, you can find me on Uncanny Valley Cancer Cell, Saving Throw uh, Show's premier actual play podcast. We play Hunter the Vigil, we hunt monsters, things get weird. It's fun. Jennifer. Uh, I am Jen Kretschmer. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram as at DreamWisp. Uh, you can find me everywhere else as DreamWisp Jen. Uh, you can also find me on Wednesdays from 2 to 4 Pacific on D&D Beyond's show Heroes of the Vale, which I can finally announce. Yay! Uh, yeah, I will be there tomorrow. Um, running around with an end your veil. And I'm sorry to ask this, but they can watch it even if it's not live, right? Yes, okay. it's it also, we have VOD on Twitch and YouTube and, and D&D Beyond, all the all the places you find your quality Dungeons and so Dragons. if you loved Jen on the show, you will love her even it's more It's a very different character. Yeah, on that. <laughs> I should say so. Um, super cool, but, though. Yeah. Jody Hauser. Hi, I'm Jody Hauser. You can find me on Twitter at at Jody underscore Hauser and Instagram at Mind Eclipse and in comic shops everywhere. Uh, currently coming out is Star Wars Age of Republic, where I get to write all like the really cool prequels era characters. Uh, Star Trek just got announced last week, and uh, there should be some other cool announcements coming soon. So keep your eyes peeled on social. Fantastic. And last but certainly not least again, Eric Reichert. Hi. Uh, you can always follow me on the Instagram or the Twitters at Most of the Shit. Uh, you can follow me on my own personal Twitch channel, Mostly Eric. Uh, and catch me here Wednesday nights for the Iron Keep Chronicles, our Dungeons & Dragons 5th edition game. Fantastic. And I'm Michael Holmes. You can find me on Instagram at Michael R. Holmes. I'm debating joining Twitter again just to tell... Uh, Oh, God, what's his name? Dave Batista, that the character that he is playing in the Dune series, uh, we are at that part of the book, and I'm reading it to my son as a bedtime story, Aww. and so I'm reading it as Dave Batista. That's awesome! Um, but uh, you should tune in later this week to Saving Throw. We've got some excellent programming coming up. Like Eric said, we do have Iron Keep coming up on Thursday, Wednesday. Um, tomorrow night, which is Tuesday, we have our Starfinder game, uh, Deepwater Deep, on the official Paizo channel. That's it's at 7.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, Iron Keeps on Thursday at 8 p.m. We've also got Wild Cards, East Texas University at uh, 8 p.m. on Friday. And you Go can Ravens. Al always check our stuff out on VOD on YouTube. And uh, we couldn't do this show if it wasn't for viewers like you. So thank you all who tuned in tonight. That was a lot of fun to run. I'm exhausted now. <laughs> and um, please tune in next Monday at 8 p.m. Pacific for the finale of the mini campaign oh. of Shadows of the Mirror Man. Thank you very much. Good night. Bye. Bye. Bye.